Associated Collect. Oh yeah, I was going to say we should record, right? Welcome, folks. Good morning. Um, I'm Mark Smith. I'm a sociologist, and we're going to talk about Node XL, social media, social networks, and social media networks. And so. If we're gonna to try to understand not just collective action, that's groups of people working together, but what we would like to understand is computer mediated collective action. So we're gonna let that first in. Uh, computer mediated collective action, that's sending people emails, that's sending text messages, that's messages on Facebook or in YouTube or in Twitter or in Flickr or in wikis or in blogs. It's all the ways that I can send stuff to you and that can change your behavior. Meet me for lunch at noon and that changes your behavior. We meet at a place. When it's one-on-one, -on -one, that's dyadic, two people, but computers change communication from one to one to one to many. And this means that I can tweet about a topic. I can write a message and put it on Instagram and maybe millions of people will see it. And so what happens if they then write a message back and another message comes back and now we're sending messages, not me to you, but many to many. That's a collective action. There's more than one person. It can't be done alone. It's collective action. And it's happening through computation, through computing. It's essentially crowds computerized, computerized crowds. And so how could we measure that? Can we map it? Can I take a picture of a hashtag? And I don't mean this. Can I take a picture of a hashtag? Can I see all the people and see their relationships with one another? Can I get a picture of the hashtag? As if it was like a crowd in a hotel ballroom. We've had a conference. We're all going to get together afterwards and have cake and we're gonna to talk to each other. What's that look like if we look down on that pattern? of dozens or hundreds of people gathering and talking to each other. That's what we want to know through computing. We would like to know what does a hashtag look like? And if we could answer that question, maybe we would answer another question. How many kinds of hashtags are there? Big ones, small ones, maybe there are divided ones, unified ones. What are the shapes of crowds? They're the crowds in a concert hall or a movie theater. They're the crowds in a train station. There are the crowds walking in a hallway. They're differently shaped crowds. Sociologists care about the shapes of crowds. We're, we're, the, we're, we're not psychologists, right? Psychologists care about what you think. Sociologists care what you do with other people. And what we think is that something bigger emerges. And so in many countries, the idea of sociology is in some ways hard to convey. In Great Britain, there was a politician, Margaret Thatcher, and she once said, society doesn't exist. There are only People and families, that's what she said, that society doesn't exist. I am a sociologist, so I take that personal because it's my topic. It would be like saying chemistry doesn't exist to a chemist. And I wish I had been there, but I'm not old enough to have been there and because I would have said the following. In that case, traffic jams don't exist. There are only drivers and cars. So clearly when you have enough drivers and cars, you can have a traffic jam. Do you have traffic jams in your country? I, I understand that you may have some traffic congestion. We have traffic jams. So traffic jams happen from the behavior of individuals. And so hashtags are also the emergent structures that come from individuals. 
So what could we do to map it? How could we draw the picture? Well, one question we could ask is, why are we going to draw a picture? Maybe we should just do the big data thing. Big data is a thing, right? We should all do big data. How about we just give you grids of numbers? Well, I have an argument about that. I think grids of numbers are not as useful as we'd like them to be. For example, here is a grid of numbers, and I would like you all to look at these numbers and answer the following three questions. Where are there errors? Where are there outliers? <clears throat> and if you need to remove one of the four, which one would you remove and why? And you may be thinking, well, statistics. Okay, all four distributions have the same statistical properties, identical. This guy, Anscom, Francois Anscom, brilliant statistician, he's trying to make a point. We're gonna see that point in just one second. But you're a large group of very talented, intelligent uh, people, and I'm not, hearing or seeing hands going, oh yeah, it's easy. Number three, number five, look at that one. That's the one that our brains don't work like this. This is not how we think. In less than one second though, one, less than a second, about 300 or 400 milliseconds, you will answer all three of those questions. Just like that. Here we go, ready? Which data points might be errors? Which are outliers? And if you're gonna remove one of the four, which one do you wanna remove? Oh. Our brains are designed to deal with shape and color and pattern. And they're not designed to deal with rows and columns of numbers. Some of you maybe are special people, and this is your preference. This is your age, go to it, that's great for you. But if you're like me, you would rather see this because this is a way of understanding the shape, the distribution, the pattern. And I have a lot of brain back here devoted to these things out here. Uh, and it, we, I can get a lot of insight from this. So the question then is, could we draw a picture of a hashtag? And let me say it, not just hashtag, but instead say anything like an email list, a web board, a discussion group, a collection of messages between a group of people, and they in particular have the ability to reply to one another. What would that look like if we drew a picture of and can our pictures carry the answers to our questions about what is the shape of the crowd? What are the critical moments in the history of the crowd? Who are the leaders? And can we discover manipulation? Can we discover the imprint of some effort to change the dialogue? And so as a sociologist, these kinds of phenomena, this, this is our area of the social science world. It, it's more than two people, or it's certainly more than one person. Two or more people doing things together that cannot be done by individuals alone. In this case, it is bringing down a 30 year dictatorship in Egypt. In this case, it's electing a president to the United States of America. But in this case, what we're seeing is that crowds now form more in social media. And Lord knows, uh, you know, I, 
I don't have my mask at my table here, but um, yeah, it's under there. Okay, so, but you know, we're all wearing masks. Being together is dangerous. Crowds are dangerous. So in many ways, the safest crowds are virtual crowds. And so the question we ask now is, how can we see the virtual crowd? When we look at a physical crowd, there is information. Happy crowd, angry crowd. What kind of crowd is it? But when we point into the virtual crowd, we lose the ability to see the shape of the crowd. We're back with Anscom, with rows and columns, tweet after tweet after tweet after tweet. Let me ask a question. How many tweets do you think you can read, let's say, in a minute? 10? Is that it? Maybe 10 tweets a minute? Uh, if it's 10 tweets a minute, how many tweets an hour? 600. How many tweets a day? So if you really want to sit down and read all the tweets about Indonesian politics, how many tweets can you read? Well, 2,000 to 3,000 a day. And that's working hard at it, right? That's really working at it. And if you spend three, four hours a day reading three or 4,000 tweets a day, how easy is it gonna to be to turn that into a publishable paper in a journal? It's not easy, it's not easy. Because what do you have as data? This, it's whatever you read. And that's great, but it doesn't scale and so the question again becomes, how can we turn this into some set of insights? And the answer is in less than one second. There we go. In less than one second, we can see the crowd. Because those little dots, those are Twitter users. And what are the lines? That's when I reply to you, when I retweet you, when I mention you. When I quote you, those are the connections that form are created when somebody does one of these actions to another person in a place like Twitter. This is Twitter data. But it could be wiki data, YouTube data. It could be uh, Instagram data. It could have been Facebook data, but not anymore because Facebook won't give us any data anymore. So that's a problem, but it could be any social media platform. Maybe it'll be TikTok. I don't have TikTok data yet, but if we could get the data, it would fit. How do we know? Because all social media is a social network. If it isn't a social network, it's not social media. So if I'm looking at pictures of running shoes, trainers, sneakers, and I can like the sneakers, that is digital media. In one message, it is not social media, it's digital media. And so what we want to understand is social media, any place where people do things with people, they reply to each other, they like each other, they favor each other, they do things with one another. And when they do that, it turns out they don't do it equally. They don't do it uniformly. It's not that everybody has the same number of links. It's not even that there is a normal curve. It's a power law. In other words, some people get a lot of links and most people get very few. So you may have heard of the phrase, the 1%, the 1%, the oligarchs, the people who have all the money. Turns out that's an overestimate. It's not 1%, it's 0.1%. It's a 10th of a percent have all of the wealth and power. Interesting. 
But it turns out that that actually shows up in networks too. 1% get almost all of the connections. They get the majority of the connections. And so what we want to enable is to allow you to easily make that. Because we think this image is a powerful image. I'm sorry, is that a question? And you know, if you do have questions, put you, there's the hand raise thing, and you can always unmute and just ask. And I haven't looked in the chat yet, but let me go and get the chat up on screen. If you do have questions, feel free to raise them. I'm happy to take any questions you may have. Um, and so again, our goal is to be a kind of uh, camera, uh, a way of taking a picture of networks. And like cameras, some pictures are not good. This is not a good picture. It is a network, but it's not a good picture of a network. And so why is it not good? It's hard to see the different structures. It's all sort of smooshed together. Have you ever seen a bad photograph? Me too. There are lots of bad photographs. Maybe you put your thumb over the camera lens. Maybe it was shaking. There are lots of bad photographs. Does that mean that photography is bad? No. Just because there are bad photographs doesn't mean that all photographs are bad. And indeed, it is possible maybe to take better pictures. This is the same data. This is a technique we call uh, the group in a box layout. It's the same data. That network can be transformed into this network. Same data. This is a visual technique, perhaps like autofocus or shake removal or white balance or color adjustment. It's an automated method to get the image stabilized, visualized, clarified. And when we see this, some things become clear. Things like this shape is different from this shape, but this shape and this shape and these shapes, they're very similar. There are structures that occur over and over. And these structures, in this case, are the hub and spoke structure. Somebody's in the middle. A lot of people are pointing at that person. They look like pin cushions. They look like wagon wheels. They are hub and spoke structures. And they show us the way that only a few people can sit at the center of these structures. How many people are at the center of those structures? Five, six, seven. How many people are here? Hundreds. So how many people can be above average? Not 100%. By definition, <laughs> right? 50% only by definition. And so what we are looking for are the ways to automatically collect the data, analyze the data, visualize the data in many different ways. This is the 3D rotating model version of it. I, I, let me bring it up and see if I can bring uh, a copy of this onto the screen because um, it is kind of wonderful to watch and, uh, get here. So here's the live version of it. You can load the page yourself here. I can share the link in the chat. And I see a comment here. Let's see. Uh, right, yeah, you're welcome to. Um, raise questions and I'll, I'll look forward to any translation assistance I can get. Um, so what you're seeing here is again, the dots are Twitter users. The line means I reply, or perhaps I retweeted. Maybe I just said your name in a tweet. That makes a line appear between me and you. And when we look at the collections of these lines, you can see that there is a kind of shape. It's like a molecule, it's like a protein, it has a shape. We are not just atoms, we are parts of molecules. 
you know, humans are individuals. It's true. I, I, there is a point where I end and you start, but we are really part of something much bigger. We're part of something that has a shape, part of a structure. And, you know, many of us are just this dot over here, but some of us are this dot. Who is that person? Who is the person at the center of this? That person is an influencer. That person has influence and power. They are, in some cases, what I like to call the mayor of a hashtag. They are an informal, unelected, but certainly ratified part of the community. And not everyone can be them, right? We can see these people are the more influential people, but the majority of the people are back here. And so these structures are present in social media, but they're not present in all data samples of social media. And so what we would like to do is start to examine the range of differences. Are all hashtags this, the same? So this is not hashtags, this is not Twitter. These are, this is in fact not data, it's a cartoon. But I live in California and these are our local, some of them local um, businesses. So we're not far from Apple and Oracle and Facebook is seven miles from here and Google is even closer. So Amazon and Microsoft are not here. They're, well, they are, but they're, they're, their headquarters are up in Seattle. So they're not as close. But what you're seeing with these pictures though are a way of trying to convey the difference between let's say the corporate culture of large organizations. If you have ever worked at one university and then gone to another one and said, oh, things are different here. Or maybe you were in one big business and you went to a different big business and you said, oh, the way things get done here is different. Maybe what you were saying in words could have been conveyed with these dots in the world. So for example, for example we have an audio issue. Let's see, who needs to mute? Let's see. Okay, I, that got quiet again. Somebody may need to mute though. Okay, uh, so, you know, just dots and lines, and yet you can tell that this is the apple where Steve Jobs used to make it so that nobody was allowed to talk to anybody but him, right? He's at the center. Nobody else is allowed to talk to anybody else. So that's a very control-oriented model, whereas in Google, everybody reports to everybody. And so there are different structures that could actually be drawn. And so our goal is to make it easy to, to get those pictures. And so until recently, you really needed to be a program. You, you needed R, you needed Python, maybe JavaScript, you needed SQL, you needed MySQL, you needed, oh, you know, you needed a lot of things, really, frankly, you needed a lot of tools. And putting them all together was like assembling some kind of complex puzzle box it wasn't simple. But there was a time when if you wanted to take a picture, you had to be a chemist because you had to make your own film. You also had to be a carpenter because you had to make your own camera. And so it's interesting that that requirement has been reduced. It is now much easier to take a picture. If you go to the, uh, to the store, you can probably buy one of these things pretty cheaply. And then of course, they got better. And so these cameras are now digital. But then they got better again, because now they are completely invisible, right? You will never buy one of those cameras again, because you probably have a really great phone that has a better camera than those old credit card cameras ever had. And so this is what we want to be. We want to be the camera for taking pictures of cyberspace. Not the camera that takes pictures of the landscape. You can't take a picture of the ocean with Node Excel, but you can take a picture of a wiki page. You can take a picture of an email list. You can take a picture of a hashtag or a discussion group. And what that looks like is this. Uh, it's Excel. That's what the XL in Node XL stands for, Node Excel. Uh, and Node, also stands for something. That, that, that's the network overview 
discovery and exploration add in for Excel. So N O D E X L. There's a whole story in that word. And so what we want you to see is that it is the spreadsheet. It's the same thing. It is Excel. It's just got some new stuff in it. And what it's all about is a way of seeing the collection of connections, but in a way that does not require you to learn how to program in R or in Python. You won't have to learn about databases. Most in Excel, and there, if you can make a pie chart, there's a really good chance that you can now make a network chart. Because let's just say you wanted to go to Node Excel Pro and you wanted to go to the import menu and you wanted to get Twitter data, then you would click here and you would get a dialog box. And then you type your query. There are some buttons to press, but then you hit okay. And most of the time, that's pretty much it. We have a magic button over here called automate. We'll talk about that in a few seconds. But because when you hit OK, it is actually going to hit automate for you, what happens is this. You get one of these. What is that? Well, that's a Node Excel workbook with a lot of worksheets. So if you look at the bottom of the work of the spreadsheet part of the screen, you're going to see a lot of little tabs there. And so that means that in each worksheet in the workbook, there are different dimensions of the data, like the list of all the people. And on another worksheet, all the words that were spoken. On another page, a list of like, uh, what else do we have? We have words, uh, we also have the summary statistics, uh, we have word pairs. So on different worksheets, you're gonna see different data. To get this all to happen, you basically select automate and hit run. Automate run. And I will note that these tick boxes, you wanna have them clicked in the right order. And then underneath any one of them, you may find that there's a whole bunch of options and that those have tick boxes. And that for any one of those, you could might hit options and find that they have options. And so, wait, I thought this was supposed to be easy. That's a lot of boxes to click. Well, that, that's true, but we have recipes. We have something called a settings options file, a recipe. And you can go to the web and grab a recipe for Twitter or for wikis or for Flickr or for other data sources. And you can bring it into Node Excel and then it will check all the boxes, check all the sub boxes, configure all the settings, and that will let you click run. And that's all you'll need to do that. You'll grab a recipe for the data type of your choice, Twitter, YouTube, Flickr, wikis, blogs, email, you grab a recipe, you put it on the data, you hit get that data, you hit automate run, essentially crank the handle, and out come these things. So we're kind of like Instagram for graphs, kind of like Instagram, but we're not going to use that name because Instagram might be mean, and Mr. Zuckerberg is nobody to mess with, right? So what you get is another worksheet. This is the list of every person in the, in the hashtag or the query. I shouldn't just say hashtag. Can be any query term, doesn't have to be a hashtag. So these different sheets, this is the sheet called edges. This is where all the connections are. And this is really critical. This is really the heart of network theory. The data, the unit of analysis is one row of this spreadsheet. So I invite you to look at the column headers. Let's look at these things over here. And the most important two of these column headers, that would be vertex one and vertex two. What is a vertex? It's the same as a node. 
It's the thing. It's like the Twitter user, that's the vertex. It's the node in the network. It's the entity. When you take two entities and you put them together, what you're saying is there's a connection between them. So when vertex one is in column A and vertex two is in column B, what you're saying is A has a relationship with B. And so what you're seeing here are row after row after row of expressions of the network question, the network question. What is the network question? The network question is who did what, with whom, when and where? Who did what with whom, when and where? That's the question. And you want the answer to that question. You want many answers to that question. There are many answers to that question because there are many people and they have done many things with each other. And so we want to know how often do they do those things? Was there an hour of the day or a day of the week in which they did that more than other days? That's about dynamics. We would like to know when was the peak hour? If people were tweeting right this minute and we had a hashtag for this event, do we have a hashtag for this event? No? Oh, well. Oh, well. But if we did, let's say you go to a big conference, they have a hashtag. Um, we would be able to track minute by minute, second by second, maybe the keynote speaker goes up to speak and we would be able to see the tweets changing over time as they spoke. So that is another dimension of such data. It's the dimension of time. And so time and structure and clustering and content. So we want to know something about the words being used. What words are used most frequently? And what words are used in ways that make them appear to be from a particular list of words? Where do those lists come from? We give them to you, but you can also replace them. So when you see our words and word pairs interface, you're seeing words written in English, in American English, not even British English, English, Amer American English. And um, those words may not be useful to you. How do you change them? Delete them. How do you replace them? Put other words in there. What if the lists you want to create are not positive and negative? Okay, change the name of the list. Maybe it's politically conservative and politically liberal. Maybe it's people who are in favor of a development and opposed to it. Maybe they have different language, different word use. Maybe it's the name of candidates in a political race. Whatever you want it to be, you can populate these word lists. And when you do, you could save the word list and they become part of the recipe. So you might have an Indonesian political Twitter recipe. And that would be pretty easy to do. You go into this dialogue, you add and delete certain words, and you now have modified the recipe. So content analysis is also part of the Node Excel experience. So what are we trying to achieve? If we can put this tool into the hands of enough scholars, researchers, analysts, we will gain a broader understanding of social media. I live in the United States. I'm only able to speak American English. I can't read any other languages. It means that I'm never going to understand what Twitter looks like in your world. But I might be able to give you a tool that lets you point it at the things that matter to you. Things I may never know exist, but you know. And so I may be able to build you the camera, but I don't know what you're going to take pictures of. And when you take those pictures, we are going to collectively build an atlas of social cyberspace. We are going to map the surface of the social computing landscape. And like the physical landscape, 
it's bumpy. Uh, it, there are mountains, there are valleys, there are plains. It's not all smooth. And so what we hope you will do is become one of our antennas. We need many, many, many antennas. And what happens when those antennas are put up is that we get publications. And in particular, I'd love for you to follow this link. Uh, I'll share that in the chat. And that's the link to Google Scholar for Node Excel. And if we look at any time, uh, we're now looking at almost 10,000, 9,480 publications in peer reviewed journals um, since about what, uh, 2010. So in 10 years, about 900 papers a year, but it's not actually equal at year over year, it's gaining uh, momentum. So there were fewer papers back in the day and now there are more and more papers. And this can be a useful tool for you because um, if you just add a word, wow, things change. In fact, um, well, look, who's, who, look who wrote that paper. <laughs> look at that. Okay, there you go. Hello, Catter. Um, so if you type a word into Google Scholar with Node Excel, you can often end up with, I mean, this is 457 results that mention Indonesia and Node Excel. That, that, that's a lot. <laughs> um, and what this gives you is uh, related work. Uh, you know, it's the literature review section pretty much baked solid for you. It also may give you some ideas, some conceptual uh, inspiration for what kind of research can you do with the tool. But I hope it also shows Node Excel is pretty well established in a lot of different languages in a lot of different nations as a path to saying something useful about social media. Right? We, we would like to say something not just useful, but scientific, which, which means empirical, quantifiable, repeatable, and disputable where I could get your data set and I could say, no, I wanna look at your data in a different way. We'd like to do all of those things. We want to create a community of practice among you all, the Node Excel users. And you can see that community of practice right here at the Node Excel Graph Gallery, which I hope you'll come and visit. And that is available at this URL. Uh, That's node XL graph gallery .org. And so this is, uh, again, like Instagram, but for graphs. So sort of like Instagraph, but let's never say that word again because they'll get in trouble. So it, it's the Instagram for graphs. And what you can do is look through these pages and you'll find that we are now at, well, you know, a third of a million of these things. Right, so the, we're, 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 there were hundreds of thousands of these now uploaded. And when you click on one, you get to drill down into a report that tells us something about who are the mayors, who are the leaders, what are the divisions, the segmentations, the subgroups, the communities, the neighborhoods, what URLs are being used, what hashtags are being used. So for example, uh, here is a discussion of higher ed. So tertiary education, these are college and uh, graduate school kinds of discussions. What we wanna see is the shape of that whole crowd. Who are the people talking about higher ed? Well, it turns out 6,444 people are talking about higher ed. How many? 6,444. A few, a, a lot. There's a crowd of them, 6,000 people. How long did it take for these 6,000 people to show up? Uh, seven days and five hours. Okay, so this is a week in the life of talking about college education not necessarily in the United States, the whole world. If, if you're in English and you use the word higher ed, then you're here. Okay, who are the mayors of higher ed? 
Well, these are the 10 people who are the most influential people in the discussion. There are how many people, what did we say? There were 6,444 people in this population. Here are 10. What percentage is that? 0.0001%, something like that. So why did we pick just 10 out of 6,000 and say they're more important than others? Because we rank them by between the centrality. And it turns out, let me jump back in here for just a second and I have to jump ahead to a different slide. Don't peek, just don't look, but here. This is what we, we need to talk about this for just one second, we'll go back. But we have to talk about the fact that there is nothing normal about the normal curve. But its name is normal. How could it not be normal curve? Well, it's also the Gaussian. It's also the bell curve. It is a bell. I get that, it's a bell. And, and Gauss, he can have it. He named it, it's his curve, that's fine. And it does describe some things like, let's say, height of humans, right? Most people are somewhere around five or six feet tall. There are some shorter people, but not a lot. And there are some taller people, but not a lot. And how tall is the tallest human? Seven feet, eight feet, maybe nine feet with some kind of genetic disorder. How many one thousand foot tall people do you know? A thousand foot, feet tall. Just thinking, I think it's zero, right? Zero? Zero, that's right, it's zero. So there are none like that. There are no super giant humans a thousand feet tall. Okay, however, what about wealth? How many rich people are there who are a thousand times richer than the poor people? Are there zero of them? No, <laughs> there aren't many, but there's about 0.1% of them. They're the, the oligarchs, they're the, you know, the rich people. Uh, and and then how many of them are there? There's about 0.1% of them. So it's this shape. We are over here. This is not much money, a lot of money. This is only a few people, a lot of people. A lot of people, not much money. A few people, a lot of money. And so this is the shape of power, money, prestige, celebrity. This is the, the shape of many sociologically interesting phenomena and not that. So let's go back to our story as we were. Why did we pick 10? I mean, you know, we could pick 20, but frankly, by the time you get to the end of 10, it's dropped off dramatically. Most people do not have this property of being in the middle of things because most people are the little dots with no connections or only one connection and only a very, very, very few people are the people with all the connections. 100% of the population cannot be above average. And so some people are like this guy. They're at the center of this incredible wheel of connections. But most people are like this person no connections at all. So the majority are like this person or maybe like this person, one connection. Almost no one is like this person, all of those connections. And so it goes from one connection to a lot of connections like that. Very few people have this. And as a result, we can argue the people who have it, have it, these, are the influencers. These are the most influential people in the discussion. They have centrality. Okay, so centrality is a sociological, empirical, quantifiable property 
of a network. We all have some centrality, the amount might be zero, but we have a property of how central we are. And the, the, the ability to gain centrality is when you connect to a group that otherwise nobody else is connected to. You become the bridge. And so let's jump back into that. Right about, oh yeah, you're right here. We were looking at different kinds of graphs in the graph gallery. And what is really important for me, to, for you to see, is that they're not all the same. There are some similarities between these graphs, but they're not all the same. And in fact, they kind of fit into categories, like the people who have these square things. Does it do they all have these square or rectangle shapes? This one's here. No, yes, no, yes, yes, sort of. Not all of them have it. What is that square thing? Well, that's the group of people who have no connections to anybody else. What does it mean to have a large group of people with no connections to anybody else? It means that the topic is a brand. It means that casual commenters are there. People who didn't have to repeat or reply to the topic. These people said the word iPhone all by themselves, said some topic. So these shapes are really important. You'll also see the wagon wheel shape, the, the, the hub and spoke shape. It looks like a, a, usually a circle or like Saturn's rings. There'll sometimes be a ring around it. And these are the shapes of influencers, because that's their audience that surrounds them. And so social media is all about connecting with other people. And when you do, you're created an edge. Every like, every link, every follow, every favorite, you're creating an edge. And so what we wanna do is make it so that you can think link. Think about these patterns because that's our, um, I think we share this ocean. You have the other end of it. So that's the Pacific. I guess you, maybe not. Okay. So uh, when you walk on the sand, you leave footprints behind. Our job is to pick up all the footprints, to notice that they tell a story. How many people? Which way did they go? Were they alone or in pairs or in a group? Did they bring a wagon? Did they come with an animal? Was it a horse? Was it a dog? Was it a child? You can learn a lot by looking at the footprints in the sand. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna collect all those footprints and we're going to automate the process of telling that story. And the story is made from the different kinds of ties that are created when people use the internet when they follow and they friend, they forward and they favorite, they like and they link and they rate and they review and they reply and they mention. And they do all these things. And every time they do, they're creating a network. And we've been looking at Twitter, but all of this works in all of the other platforms. We're talking about the creation of social media networks. And that means that we can extract from all these different kinds of platforms, the same data structure. YouTube is not Facebook, but they can be expressed using the same data structure, different values. So in one, I have a post, in the other, I have a video. In one, I have a comment, in the other, I have a reply. It, you can call them different things, but they are structurally the same. And so this is the network question, sometimes called the journalistic question. Uh, Aristotle apparently came up with this. So it's been around a while. Um, usually in a no newspaper article, the first paragraph is supposed to have the answer to all of these five things in the first couple of sentences. Who did what, with whom, when and where? And so what we are all about is recognizing that that can be a database structure. Who did what, with whom, when, and where? And so we invite you to think link. What's that mean? Well, to think not just about A, A is an entity, maybe it's a person, 
maybe it's you or and then there's b and that's another person or an entity maybe it's mom or a friend or a co-worker and in network approaches what we want to know is if a is connected to b does b connect to a and maybe it was a mutual relationship and maybe it actually is mutual but it comes in an imbalanced way like you call your mom but she calls you three times a day and you call her once a week and maybe i don't know you should call her more i guess I, you know really so we want you to be able to think not just about individuals individuals are great that's fine people have height they have weight they have wealth they have an address. Those are the attributes of them and them alone. But they also have relationships. And as a sociologist, we focus on the web of relationships as much, if not more, than on the attributes of the individual. Individuals have height. That's great. But we are saying that the thing that predicts what will happen to you next is not as much things that are about you, but rather the things about the people you have relationships with. The chance for wealth or opportunity or God forbid disease or problems, it comes from your network. It doesn't really come from you. And so who you're connected to and how you're connected to them is really the greatest predictor of your future outcomes than anything that there is inherently about you alone. And so what we are trying to show the research community is that you can think link in a spreadsheet because you can express a link, a tie, or a bond, a relationship, you can express this thing simply by putting two people's names on the same row. And so these letters, G-U-I-D, I don't know if you've ever seen that phrase that stands for globally unique identifier. GUID, Global Unique Identifier, a phone number, an email address, your IP number, your MAC address, your IMEI number, your tax ID number, your health insurance number. You're a human. You have a lot of numbers, right? You have a lot of numbers associated with you. Uh, and most of them are associated with just you, right? Now, in the old days, people had a phone for a house. But now phones are for people. One phone, one people. Not one, not it used to be one phone, one house. Uh, or in some cases, when my mother was young, it was one block, one phone. You know, the phone would ring at the end of the street and people would run to your apartment and yell, somebody wants to talk on the phone with you. And that was big news. But now one person, one phone. And that means one phone number, one person. And that means two phone numbers represents a call from one phone number to the other phone number. And so I might write phone number one comma phone number two, time, date, duration. And I might even know location of phone one, location of phone two. That would be an edge. And if we had all of the phone calls written down in a database and who has that data? The phone company, right? And who else has that data? Your government. And who else has that data? Uh, my government. <laughs> right? <laughs> that would be my government. So, um, but how do they represent that data? This is how they do it. It's called an edge. And it's whenever two GUIDs are joined, and join means linked side by side next to each other. It's a database term from SQL, joining. This means that you're saying A has a connection to B. Okay, so this is what a spreadsheet filled with edges looks like. There's column A, there's column B. Whenever A is there, they wrote a message. And whoever is in column B, that message had their name in it. They talked about that person. 
that created an edge, a connection, a link, a tie. And so the collection of connections then forms a network. It creates a structure. It has a shape. And that shape is built out of who did what, with whom, when, and where. And then we might add things like, how tall was the first person? How many months has person number two been a customer? Those are attributes of the individual. It's separate from the attributes of the, of the relationship. So what do we really want to know about social media? Why do we want to know something about social media? Well, social media seems to have had just a little bit of an impact on our culture. Politics, entertainment, public health, everything we're doing, we do because we're scrolling. I'm scrolling, you're scrolling. Anybody here not have a phone? Anybody? Anybody not have a phone? Is that zero? That's zero. That would be zero. You know, at least somebody here did not brush their teeth today. Okay, so I'm just saying, there are very few things that we have zero non-compliance, zero. There are only a few things I can think of. Uh, you walk out of your house and you realize you don't have something with you. You turn around, you go home. Keys, wallet, phone, right? Keys, wallet, phone. So though what we see on the phone matters because it's what we hear. And what we hear is what we know. And so what is, is what we scroll past. And so it would be nice to know how did that show up? Why did that show up? Who made this thing that I just went and scrolled past? How did it get there? What's its history? Where did it come from? Where is it going? Can I trust it? How could I know? And now we know that it's not just sort of natural events. Like, do you remember ice bucket? challenge. Anybody remember Ice Bucket Challenge? Yeah. So big fundraising thing was like 2017, I think, 2018, somewhere around there. It was certainly before COVID, right? What was the most recent Ice Bucket Challenge? I can't remember one either. There wasn't one. Isn't that interesting? A lot of people were attracted to social media because of Ice Bucket Challenge. Essentially, it was like lightning will strike. You will hit a jackpot. You will get a huge charity payoff. But it didn't happen again. Be interesting to know why. Why did it happen? Why did it not happen? And so we would like to know how do these kinds of things where things go viral, what's that look like? Do things always go viral the same way? How many different ways are there to go viral? So we are building the network approach where it is an integration of the network analysis and the content analysis, and ultimately a visualization. The visualization, because that's how our brains work, and that's how we think that you'll both be able to discover and communicate, discover and present a finding to others. And that, to me, is the ultimate payoff. We are going to do five things in Node Excel, and then we're going to add two more at the end in something called Insights, Node Excel Pro Insights. The five things. We're going to collect data for you. We're going to store it somewhere. It's going to be a spreadsheet. We're going to analyze it. We're going to visualize it. We're going to publish a report. Five things. Isn't that enough? No. Two more things. Discovery and presentation. You have to find the what is the story part. And then you have to be able to tell that story to somebody else. And so 
we are trying to automate as much of that as is possible. You're going to collect your data, analyze the data, visualize the data, and publish that report potentially 100% automatically. I have a machine over there, and it's making maps for me right now, and it will publish new ones to the graph gallery all night long, all day long. And if you go to the graph gallery, you'll see them popping up every few minutes, more maps, more maps, more maps. And that can be useful because each of these maps summarizes somewhere between 5, 10, 15, 20,000 tweets. Now we've already established that you as a human being can consume what? 2,000 tweets, 3,000 tweets. And that when you do those things, the, the, the consumption of these tweets, you don't end up with an artifact. You end up with notes that are hard to use in publications. It's difficult. It becomes ethnography rather than big data, computational social science. And these days, the humanities approach Mm, not popular. <laughs> I, I, I'm, a, I'm a digital humanitarian. I, I, I like humanities. I'm for it. But I accept reviewer number two wants you to use big data. They want you to use data. Okay. But how many people here are software developers? If I ask you how many of you program in Python? Nope. Any R developers programming in the R programming language? Any R programmers? No? Come on, let's learn. That was cool. Uh, some people are learning a little bit of R is what I hear. I, I, I can't hear you, but, but you're on mute. But maybe, I don't know, maybe that's OK. OK, so, so I, what I, I guess the takeaway of that uh, little rhetorical interaction was we're not programmers. And if we're not programmers, what are we going to do about it? Let programmers build us tools that we can use. And so what we are attempting to do is to put connection before all of the other steps. Connection. And so what's that mean? It means looking at a message and recognizing the message isn't just words. The message is an edge, maybe more than one. If I say in a tweet, at person A, did you talk to at person B? Then I've created a reply to one and a mention of another. I've created two edges. It's not just words. The words mean connection. And if we encode the messages as, collections of connections, then we get all that beautiful structure. We get to see who are the influencers and we get to see these things, clusters, we get automatic market segmentation. We don't have to say, well, if you use a word, then you're in a cluster. We're not gonna say that. We're gonna say the people who connect to themselves the most form a cluster, and then we will study the words that they use. That's how we'll do this. So first it's connection, then it's cluster, then it's content. And this is a different approach. How different? Most of the other people start at content, not at connection, not at cluster, they go straight to content. And that means that they're just doing an analysis of millions of words from tens of thousands of people which is not bad, it's just that there is better. What is that better? Connection leading to cluster. And that leading to understanding who are the key people, who are the mayors, who are the leaders of these discussions. And we know there are leaders. We have yet to see one democratic hashtag. We have not seen an egalitarian hashtag. 
There are no hashtags where everybody contributes equally. There are no hashtags where people contribute in the bell curve. The only hashtags we've ever seen have that shape. In social science, we don't get that many law-like regularities, right? The physics people, the chemistry people, they get all the fun. They have law after law after law. Yeah, e equals mc squared, f equals ma, k equals one half mv squared. They, they have all these great laws. But sociology doesn't have so many laws. But we do have some law-like observations. And one of them is the power law distribution of power in social networks. We'll take it. We're on our way to physics. We're gonna get there someday. We're gonna be social physics someday, but right now we're not, <laughs> but we're getting there. So network analysis has these three layers. And it's really important to kind of conceptualize three kinds of love. It's sort of like the street, the city, and the nation, something like that. It's the individual, there they are, that's a dot down there. There's a person. That is a unit of analysis. We're gonna think about each individual. There's a person, but there's this, there's the group, the cluster, the neighborhood, the, the segment, and that's a unit. That's a level of analysis. We can talk about it, the group. And then of course, there's this, there's the whole thing. There's the unit of analysis that almost all the other tools talk about is the big blue box, because it's everything. So the big difference between them and a network approach is that because networks see structure, they can segment and then they can rank who are the people who have the positions that are special and then we get to know they are the mayors. So in, in real estate, we have a saying that there are three most important things in real estate. Do you know the three most important things in real estate? Location, location, location. Those are the three most important things in real estate. In network theory, we have a similar statement. What are the three most important things in network theory? Position, position, position. It's where you are in the network that really matters. That's the important thing. How connected are you to the people who are most connected? So these different ways of looking at the graph help us calculate who's important. So here's a network, just a plain old network. It isn't real, it's just letters of the English alphabet. But we could change the color and the size of the dot depending on how we wanna count. So for example, this is degree. Degree means how many lines touch that dot. Here's K, K is very small. How many lines touch K? One line. This is Z, Z is very big. How many lines touch Z? One line, two line, three line, four line, five line, six lines touch Z. Okay, so that's degree, how many lines? And let's look over here at O, O is big, Four lines, right? One, two, three, four. O is big. Let's keep an eye on O. Look at O. O got small. Why is O small? Well, who got big? This is called betweenness centrality. It's a different way of counting. It's not how many lines you've got. It's how unique your lines are. Unique, another way to put it. If we remove F, how does the graph look after that? Three broken pieces. If you take away F, you break the graph into the most number of pieces. If you take away L, you break the graph into two pieces. If you take away K, 
you don't break the graph at all. That's interesting. That's what we're trying to capture. Trying to capture how much are you holding the network together? And we call that centrality. And particularly it's called betweenness centrality and F and L and P and Q and Z have it and the others don't. And so we're going to use this property of social networks to help us identify the people in the middle, the people who are the most important people, the less than 1% of the population that are the influencers. And it turns out that this is both a blessing and a curse. The, the exciting part is small groups of people can have great power. The bad side is small groups of people who are doing bad things can have great power. So there are plenty of people, especially in my country, unfortunately, who deny first that COVID exists, or then they'll tell you that the vaccine doesn't work, or they'll say that masks don't work. And I, I know masks work and I think vaccines are great. I really do, I love vaccines. Um, and so we are now in a situation where there is a, uh, a kind of information pollution, network pollution. And some people call it disinformation. And then there is of course misinformation. Misinformation is when you're wrong, but you don't know that. Disinformation is when you're wrong and you know it. So most of the problem we have is not misinformation. It's not true that people are just wrong and they don't know it. A lot of us repeat things that are wrong and we don't know it, but we didn't create that information. We just repeated it. It's the people who create that information, who know it's not true, who are creating disinformation. And the challenge we have is that disinformation can be promoted by a small group of people, 10, 15, 20 people. Recent research showed that 60% of anti-vax tweets came from 12 people. So a very small group of people can have a big impact and that is both a blessing and a curse. If the people are good, it's great. Small groups do big things. If the group is bad, it's bad because small groups do big bad things. And so the network needs more tools to help it do good things rather than bad things. It is said that the internet is an electronic nervous system, and maybe it is, but it's not an electronic immune system, and maybe it needs to be. And so, what we are trying to do is use the tools of network theory to help us identify who are the people who are most trustworthy or at least most influential and then they can be studied for their trustworthiness. And so the power law distribution shows us that there's only going to be a few. It's a law like regularity. Sometimes it's called the Matthew effect or in network theory, preferential attachment. And it shows up in nature all the time in, in the way that blood vessels form. Uh, there's something called angiogenesis. The um, parts of your body that get blood vessels to grow towards it, get more blood vessels to grow towards it. You know, the winners who win early win big. And so what we want you to see then is that when we see these patterns, we can actually see six patterns. We talked about some of these patterns before. There's the nobody's talking to anybody pattern. That's this, the fragmented brand cluster. But there's also the hub and spoke pattern. And this one's particularly important because this is the broadcast pattern. That's the, I am an influencer, I'm gonna talk and a lot of people are gonna retweet me. And that's what it looks like to be that influencer and to talk and have those people retweet you. 
but there are the other shapes. There's the opposite shape, which is one person replies to many people. Often this is an airline, a cable TV company. It could be a phone company. It's a service provider. And a lot of people complain and it replies. But interestingly, the people it replies to don't talk to each other. And again, over in the broadcast network, you, it's a lot like being in an audience. You like somebody and you retweet them, but somebody else also liked and retweeted them, but you don't want to talk to them. So you're in an audience, at least in my country. When I went back, when we went to movies, I haven't been to a movie in a while, uh, but when we went to a movie, if I sat down next to you, I did not want to talk to you, right? We don't talk to each other in the movie. We're here to look at the screen, not talk to each other. And so that's a lot like what we're seeing in the broadcast network. These are people who are not connected to each other except through the hub. So a lot of this work can be uh, read about uh, at this link. Uh, if you Google for Pew Internet and Node XL, uh, there is, I think, a, a pretty useful methodological piece here called How We Did It. It's a about 16 page guide to actually making these things. You can like find that useful. Um, it's also uh, where we show these various shapes. We have a whole section of this report that talks about the shapes like the hub, the hub and spoke pattern, uh, or, and, and the fact that that means audience. It's a lot like being in a lecture hall, uh, but it's not the only pattern. Right, there is this bridge pattern. That's my bridge. That's the Golden Gate Bridge. Come visit my bridge. Um, we, if you have a vaccination, you can come to America again. We're letting people in. Come on back. Um, but you know, the interesting thing about the bridge is that um, it doesn't have competition. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't want to take that bridge, it's not like there are three others you get to choose. And so the bridge is interesting because. Uh, it charges you $7 to go over the bridge. But there are streets in San Francisco, like 10th Street, you can drive down that street for free. Now, why doesn't 10th Street say, I want $5? Because there is 11th Street and there's 9th Street. It has competition. The Golden Gate Bridge, on the other hand, is a monopoly. And do you know what's on the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge? That's where the wine country is. It's where all the vineyards are. So if you're, I don't know if you're fans of wine, but if you like wine, it's over that way. So these structures also appear in networks like these structures. These are the isolates. These are the islands. These are the people who have no connection to anybody. And by themselves, they're not that interesting. But taken together as an archipelago, now they become interesting because the amount of these isolates actually tells us something about the type of conversation you're having. So what we want you to be able to do is explore these data sets and do it for the topics that matter to you. Whatever topic that might be, because what we're trying to achieve is a kind of collective critical mass of scholarship that will allow us to say meaningful things about social media. What would be meaningful? Like, I would like to be able to say things like, this collection of tweets has been manipulated by this account in this way. This is no longer a natural conversation. This is our newest version or extension of Node Excel, and I will be able to share a link to it with you in just a second. There we go. Put that in the chat. So uh, I've, I've mentioned that Node Excel does five things. Uh, you need seven. <laughs> uh, 
And those two additional things are discovery and presentation. And so this is the American Public Health Association, APA. Um, this is a tool then that lets you, and you can click that link and you can do all of this yourself on a browser. You don't need any software to install. And the neat thing is that it takes all of that spreadsheet data and it makes it very interactive. Really easy to start to see, oh, well, these parts of the United States are really important. Whereas let's say up here, it's not. And let's see where else in the world is this discussion happening? And wait a second, you guys are over this way, right? You're, you're somewhere around here. There you are. Um, so let's see. I think you're here, right? Is that right about, you guys are right about here? Is that you? Yeah, right. I was in Den Pasar once, like, God, that was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, but yeah, yeah. I, conference, not a tourist. I wasn't a tourist. But it was nice, I gotta admit, it's very pretty. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, but you know, we can see that Bali was not the center of the American Public Health Association conference discussion, and, and that's perfectly reasonable. And maybe what I could ask you to do is, how about you give me a hashtag or a word or a phrase that I should map, and then I'll make both a node Excel map and I'll also make an insights map, and we can probably make it in the while we're talking, and I'll put one up, and that way it'll be more relevant, locally relevant. But already, I hope what you'll see is that when you take a bunch of these tweets and you stick them on a map, stories can be told, right? I mean, who, who is that one person in Indonesia who is talking about the American Public Health Association? You know, who is this person? And well, the answer is, you know, we can find out. We're going to be able to find out. There's Danny here. That's who. So let me grab uh, a different browser. I think, uh, just a second there, got this one, got this one, got this, there we go. So the value of a tool like this is not just, well, there, there are at least a few. One, users don't have to have any software. They just need a web browser. Two, it doesn't have to be a PC anymore. It could be a Mac, it could be a tablet, it could be anything, it could be Android, doesn't matter. Three, um, easy to share, just email the link. Uh, four, now you're engaged in a kind of discovery. And that discovery is something that can be achieved with a lot of filtering. Like over here, we see Twitter web app, Twitter for iPhone, Twitter for Android. See this little dial, this, this little widget over here uh, with the bluish boxes. And so this orange thing says Twitter for Android, 79 Android users, uh, it's 272 iPhone, uh, 325 using the web. That means probably laptop users. Huh, it's kind of interesting that there's really that breakdown of Android to iPhone, and maybe there's a story there. iPhone tends to be a more expensive device. Androids tend to be more affordable. Android use is more common in lower income areas of the world. Okay, is that a story that we can tell? Well, how about we just click here and ask the question, where are the Android users? And just by clicking right there, in a few seconds, this is going to update and the dots will only be the dots that are also Android users. At which point we could click again and look at the iPhone users and try to say, is there a difference between the iPhone and the Android user? And ultimately we're trying to make a hypothesis. We're trying to say, well, the people who said this are different from the people who said that. They're in a different place or they have a different attitude or an orientation. People who said the right wing slogan are different from the people who said the centrist or left wing slogan. We have some insight. We also want to look at who are the key people. And so we can give you a display that makes it very clear that these are the people who said a lot of people's names. They have out degree 
they say other people's names, but nobody said their name. These are people who say other people's names a lot, but nobody says their name. You know who these people are though. They both say other people's names a lot and other people say their name. If a lot of people talk about you and you talk about a lot of people, who are you? You're the influencer. And so these dots represent the people who are the most influential people in the discussion. Not these people, not even these people who say a lot of people's names, doesn't matter. Nobody talked to them. Similarly here, this quadrant of this scatter plot, which basically says, how much are you the most central person? And then how connected are you to the most connected people? These people become the most interesting, the most extreme uh, people in the influencer quadrant. So this allows us to slice and dice the data from many dimensions. So for example, these are photos that are posted in this conference's hashtag. And so we could, instead of starting with tweets or words or hashtags, we could start with uh, an image and we could ask who tweeted that image and did it get retweeted? And who are the people who talked to that account? So an image focused approach rather than merely a textual approach. Similarly, we can do it with the web URLs. And we even have a page, it's a little hidden, it's page 14, you have to navigate directly to it using the table of contents. There is a table of contents down here. And this is the page called Compare2. And Compare2 is all about being able to click here and then use the control key and click here. So I've clicked in group one, and over here I've clicked in group two. And what we're going to immediately see is this is a presentation of group one, and this is a presentation of group two. And we're gonna see that they use different images, they have different people, they use different hashtags and words, and all of that kind of thing. We'll implicitly have a comparison between these two groups simply by clicking and then control clicking, we're done. We now have an ability to say, well, this group is different from that group. And by the way, we think maybe this is also doing task number seven, which is you could show this to someone. This is the presentation. Screen grab this. This is the slide for the talk. This is the diagram for the paper. And so the goal for us is to make it so that you can get the pictures of the conversations that matter and get them in a format that allows you to publish, to make claims that are in fact supported and validated by data. And so we hope that that's going to meet your needs that you're a scholar, social media is everywhere. The tools we have, well, it, it, I, I, let me put it this way. If you can learn Python or R, that would be a good thing. I just have to say, I was not able to learn Python or R myself. Or I, I should be clear. I spent a long time, I tried to learn Python, and I learned Python, but guess what? I didn't learn it well, right? So you can spend hours and learn it, but it's sort of like learning how to play the saxophone. It's really easy to do badly, very hard to do well. And so instead, maybe I should have said the piano. This is a player piano. Pianos you know, can play themselves. It's hard to have a self playing saxophone, I think. Um, we want to make it so that you can, without learning R, without learning Python, without learning SQL Server, you can do the seven things. 
the seven things, collect your data, store your data, analyze your data, visualize your data, report on your data, discover something meaningful in it, tell the story to somebody else. Seven things we need to do in order to say something meaningful about social media. And why do we wanna say something's meaningful about social media? Because social media seems to be meaningful. Now, I, I, I don't mean that it's profound in the sense that I read it and it's like a novel and it, or it's like philosophy or something, but it's changing people in the same way that print changed people, telegrams, telephone, radio, film, television, mobile telephony, digital media. It's part of a long chain of technologies of communication. It's a long chain with some continuity and some discontinuity. Some things are completely new. Some things are just the same with a little bit of a twist. And so, for example, earlier forms of communication technology were thought to be very dangerous, to be disruptive. In fact, people thought that a technology called telephone was dangerous because people could call you and tell you they were somebody and they weren't that person and you wouldn't know. And so there is a word in the English language that describes someone who is inauthentic. And that word is called a phony. And that word comes from the phone, a telephone. The technology that I think most of us would agree is perfectly fine. Te telephones are not tearing society apart. We are not having a slide towards right-wing dictatorship because of telephones. But there was a time when people said, it's the telephone, it's tearing society apart. There was a time when it was comic books tearing society apart. There was a time when it was television tearing society apart. Apparently society gets torn apart all the time. And I'm not saying that there aren't social conflicts. There are social conflicts, clearly there are. But every new technology comes in and people point at it and say, the internet is doing this to us. I'd like to frame it as we're doing that to ourselves using the internet. We've been doing this to ourselves for a long time. So there is a sense that, let me see if I can find my proper slides for you. There's a sense that there is a thing called the marketplace of ideas. Has anybody ever heard that phrase, the idea of a marketplace of ideas? Um, let me check the screen, I wasn't looking. Marketplace of ideas, anybody? You know, Some ideas are good, some ideas are bad. People adopt ideas, they try them out, they throw them away, they go out and get new ideas. And uh, these ideas compete like cars, good cars, bad cars. So a lot of people in the United States talk about this marketplace of ideas idea. And usually it means we'll let people say anything they want because like, you know, the bad stuff will get out of the market eventually. But what we are trying to say is if there is a marketplace of ideas, where is the accounting software? So let me frame this as a question. Imagine a marketplace, uh, like a regular one, like a financial marketplace. It's a marketplace. And there's no accounting software. Nobody's keeping books. It's hard to imagine. We live in a world of accounting. Imagine businesses that didn't keep accounting records. What would business be like? I'm gonna just suggest that the right answer is, Fraudulent, criminal. You know, people are going to say they have more money than they do. And so, somewhere around the 1400s in Italy, uh, accounting started to be a thing. Uh, apparently, it was imported from the 
Persians, I think, came up with accounting the first. So what we're suggesting is that we need more software for accounting for the marketplace of ideas. So a software package that allows us to recognize that information systems are not necessarily high quality information systems, which is to say that the internet works perfectly well to send true things and not true things. It doesn't care. It's also true that humans like not true things. So has anyone here ever seen the movie where there's people in space and they have swords and they fly around in spaceships? You've seen this movie with the swords and the light, yeah, you know. Is it true? No, it's not. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, nothing happened. There is no Luke Skywalker. There is no Darth Vader. Yeah, I know, <laughs> but it didn't happen. It's a story, right? But how much time and money and energy and effort goes into humans telling each other the story, consuming the story, telling the story again and again and again and again? Is it a true story? No. Do we care if the stories are true? No. The truth of the story is not the way we value the information. The information is valued on other dimensions. Was it fun? Was it exciting? Was it interesting? Those are important dimensions. Is it true? No Yoda, no R2-D2, no C-3PO, no Wookiees, no Chewbacca, no X-Wings. And it's amazing how much we could talk about it. We could talk about it all day and none of it happened. So humans don't care how true things are. Humans don't care anymore about this thing we call facts. Facts are inconvenient. And so we had a politician in America in the 60s who said, everyone is entitled to his own opinion, but not his own facts. Turns out that that was an opinion. So everybody's entitled to their own facts. Everybody. And it can't, you can't convince anybody of anything. The more I argue with you, the more you believe what you believe to begin with. And so we have to deal with the fact that, just a moment, yeah, I'll be done at eight. Okay. All right, that's my son. Um, so um, we are facing the challenge that social media is being weaponized. It is a problem. There are solutions. Accounting systems are gonna be one of them. No one solution is gonna solve the problem entirely, but it is possible now to solve these problems. So we call it tribal epistemology. It is the practice of believing the things that the people you want to sit down for dinner with, what they believe, you believe. And so it matters more that you get to sit down and have dinner with those people than it is to be right. So what we're proposing is that there are ideas, technology ideas, that can improve things without requiring governments to, quote, censor. We in the United States have a very strange relationship with censorship. We do it all the time, but we pretend we don't. But what I'm going to propose is that we can do something without censorship that would still do some positive things in terms of information quality, putting a break on low quality information and accelerating high quality information. And we know that the problem is very serious and deserves attention because people are refusing the vaccine. People are taking medications for animals instead. Disinformation is circulating and it causes harm. So 
it is said that a rising tide lifts all boats. However, some boats sail better than others. And that boat, this boat, this is the boat of lies, and this is the boat of science. In science, we have to check our numbers. In lies, we never have to ask twice. This one moves fast, this one moves slow. This one is attractive, this one is boring. The marketplace of ideas has an inclination towards fraud. And so what we are trying to explore are the missing pieces. Pieces that are missing from a technology in the way that early cars had no safety belts. They had no airbags. They had no roll cages. They didn't have headlights. <laughs> you know, <laughs> early cars, very bad and dangerous, deadly dangerous, very, very dangerous machines. After a while, safety belts, airbags, roll cages, headlights, turn signals, all that kind of stuff gets added to cars. We have to do the same thing to the internet. It's missing pieces. One piece is detection. How do you even know if somebody is attempting to manipulate some discussion? You don't even have radar. Node Excel is at least one attempt to be a radar for social media. But the other two things, what about them? Deflection is what you do when the radar says you are under attack. There's no checkbox, or it's not checked. We don't know what deflection looks like. If I told you you're under attack, what would you do? We don't know. It would be useful to find out and maybe, you know, uh, raise the drawbridge or something. Do something. Because now you know, because of category one, there is a problem. Somebody is engaged in hostile activity towards you. Deflection, block the blow. Category three, this is the most American part of my story. Um, deterrence. Deterrence is when we say, don't do that, because we're gonna do it to you. That's deterrence. I put a question mark there because it's ethically dubious questionable. It's not clear that you should do that. First category detection, absolutely, no question. If you are under attack, you have every right to know. Category two, deflection, absolutely moral. If you're under attack, you have a right to defend yourself. Deterrence. That's when you go to somebody else's country and you mess things up. It's not clear that you have a right to do that. However, the United States maintains the world's largest arsenal of nuclear weapons. We have 26,000 nuclear weapons. The cost of the nuclear arsenal in the United States of America since 1945 is $7 trillion. Imagine how much hospitals and schools and roads could have been built with $7 trillion. So we have a $7 trillion arsenal. It's not clear that it was the right thing to build at the same time since 1945. How many nuclear wars have we had? That's zero. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave a question mark there. I don't know. It's not like I'm gonna tell you whether or not nuclear weapons are good or bad. I don't know. I'm just going to say there is a whole nother category there in which we go and say to our adversaries, don't do that. So I'm going to work on one and two. I'm not going to work on three, but I do think three is at least worth discussion. So this is a uh, urban sociologist, Jane Jacobs, and she said, basically, if you want to live in a place that's worth living, you need a lot of different kinds of people to be there with you. And so what we're trying to do is avoid changing the internet in a way that makes it no longer very useful, which is to say throwing the baby out with bathwater. But we also want to avoid this. 
This is when we leave the castle gates open and the invader comes in. So between this and this, there has to be some other solution. And there are. There are other solutions. We're just not thinking about them. So one solution is distributed curation, uh, an idea that I call, you know, choose your own editor. This would be not just following people and seeing the tweets they create, but allowing them to delete tweets so you don't see them. Why would that be a good thing? Well, maybe those tweets are really low quality information tweets and you shouldn't have seen them anyway. So in this model, instead of giving the government a single organization the right to do this, we individuals pick the people we want to do it for us. And then we always retain the right to revoke that privilege. With one more click, you're not my editor anymore. So we are trying to help people understand that when we put our data into social media platforms, a lot of times we think we are engaging with a data bank. But in reality, we're, we're dealing with a data casino. What's that mean? Well, uh, in a data bank, you make a deposit and then you can make a withdrawal of your interest. At a data casino, you can't. You're not putting money on deposit. You're risking it. You're wagering it. And sometimes you get paid off handsomely, but not often. So we are trying to help people lead a path to a data bank and to a world in which social media matters and is valued the way we would value money. And any pile of money that has any value has an accounting software package watching the money. And that's what we should do with social media. It's how we will get rid of the fraud and increase the quality of the information. So with that, I see that I have 30 seconds left. Uh, are there questions? Yes, no? uh, there, there are actually some people wanting to ask questions. Yes, please go right ahead. I, can, can we pause for 30 seconds though? I'll be, I just have to get something, some, some water to drink. Is that okay? 30 seconds, be right back. Hold on a second. di kolom chat It's okay Dr. Smith uh, take your time Be right there, just another moment. It's okay, Dr. Smith. <laughs> Take your time. Already keep you waiting, be right there. Okay, sorry for the delay. Okay. Uh, uh, have okay. Just finish your drinks first. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Because you've been talking for hours, so five minutes of drinking is fine. Okay. Cool. So go ahead. I'm happy to hear the questions. Okay. So we have um, three questions. Uh, first coming from Mr. Irwan. Uh, do you wanna? Okay. Yes. Uh, sorry, Mr. Smith. Uh, in not Excel sheet, there is a sub, sub graph. 
how we can explore the subgroup of vertex. Okay, so I think uh, the question is uh, the idea of a uh, subgraph, and uh, the subgraph is this thing uh, which is a local network, the network of one person and the people around that person. Let me make some subgraphs here. We'll see them. And uh, how can you use them? Well, uh, they'll appear in the spreadsheet. And when you sort by attributes like betweenness, you will see that the shapes tend to percolate, move. Some shapes go down here, other shapes move up there. Um, and so what we're going to see is that uh, some of the shapes have a kind of, um, let's see, the dumbbell shape, right? You have one group over here, you have another group over here, and then you have this connector. And so we're going to see that uh, whoever is the connector, that's the betweenness part. And so we're going to see that many of these people have a kind of dumbbell shape uh, if they are the high betweenness people. So let's see if I can find, uh, oh, here we go. Here, here's another one. Um, and we've got it already calculated. So when you're looking at these little images here, the dot in the middle is that person. And the dots around that dot are all of the people that that person has connected to or who connected to that person. And so when we have sorted by between this centrality, you'll see that these tend to be bigger. And as we go down here, they get smaller. And so these are essentially, if you reached into the network and you plucked out just the one dot and its neighbors, that's what we're seeing here. So these are just the local ego network. The ego is the dot and the ego network are the dots around the core dot. So in, in sociology, we sometimes say the me, I'm ego and you are alter, ego, alter, alter the other, ego, the I. And so this is ego and its alters, and it is intended to give you a taste of a visual sense of how connected is this person. Clearly these people are very connected, but down here, this is not very connected. So did that address your question? Yes. Uh, how we can detect uh, subgrep member in this seat. How do you detect subgraph membership? Uh, well, everybody is a member of their own subgraph. I think maybe what you're interested in is this idea of grouping. And I think what you may be asking me is, how do I know which group each, uh, each vertex is in? And that's easy. Uh, it tells you what group it's in. So let's see, when we get this, we're gonna have to get control back. It's, it's inserting the images right now. Um, but there is a column here and I'll have to go look for it, but it is the vertex group assignment. It, it's out over here somewhere. It's gonna be, it'll tell you which group is that vertex in. Oh yes, I know. Uh, in vertex group, then we can select the filter group one, group two, or group three. Then we can explore more about the subgrip. That's right. And I'll note that all of that shows up in insights, where you'll see group one, group two, group three. And if you click on group one, it only is group one. If you click on group two, it'll become only group two. So it's a way of making that a little easier to just go into insights rather than to have to deal with it here in the spreadsheet. Yes, okay. thank you. Okay. Uh, so we have two more questions. Dr. Smith, um, the next question's coming from me, actually. <laughs> um, so my question is a bit of a bigger picture compared to Mr. Irwan's question. So. I was checking on your Google Scholar yesterday and I found out about your paper 
about conversation trees. And I'm actually very passionate in conversation analysis and also big data, but I'm not so expert yet on big data, but I've been like wondering, like how can I connect conversation analysis with big data analysis? And I've been reading on papers and, and I found your paper as well. And I thought I should really ask you like the big picture, like how can I start combining conversation analysis and, and big data analysis? Right, right. Well, I um, I studied conversation analysis at UCLA with uh, Manny Shagloff, and uh, conversation analytics is a dimension of sociology that is important. It has a new opportunity to be relevant because so much conversation is computer mediated conversation. And so I would argue that some of what we've seen today is conversation analytics and is in fact big data conversation analytics because we are bringing in content, we're doing content analysis, we know about the words associated with each individual, each group, the graph, and so we are creating a content analytic model within the framework of a network analysis. Now, I think you may be referring to, in particular, the idea of a threaded chat. Yeah, and so uh, threaded chat uh, has not yet been implemented in things like Messenger or WeChat or WhatsApp and so on, it, those are not threaded conversations. And um, I wrote that paper almost 20 years ago. So apparently we can live pretty well without it. So maybe it's not a great idea, uh, but the idea of doing the analysis of those conversations, I think is a good idea. Um, imposing threading may be too heavy a burden, uh, in, in that paper, we basically said the user will go back and click on the item that they want to reply to, and then they'll reply, and that will create a, collect, a connection. Uh, so, it, it, for example, you might have people say, how many people here are from London? How many people are here from Paris? And somebody replies, I am. You're like, which one? We need to disambiguate the reply to figure out which prior is it attached to? It didn't turn out to be uh, important. People figure it out. When you say anybody from London, anybody from Paris, and somebody says, I am, I guess the, the response is, which? So humans figure it out. They work it out. So uh, I hope I'm answering your question. I think the answer is uh, Node XL is doing conversation analytics. Uh, we do have a feature in Node Excel called Paths. And if you select the Paths feature in the graph pane, it will show it to you as a chain of threaded conversation. It will take child pan, uh, parent pointers out of the data and it'll build a tree. So does uh, is there any value in calculating uh, metrics about the shape of the tree? Yes, and we do it. We calculate how deep is the thread, how fast is the thread, how many people are in the thread, all those kinds of things. So thread analytics, I still think, has a lot of value. Okay. Uh, I think you're answering my questions, uh, Dr. Smith. Just one tiny question. Can you spell the feature on Node XL that do the conversation analysis? Uh, yep, yep. Yes. We call it paths. Oh, wait, no, I missed my. Hang on a second. Paths, right? Paths. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank and you. And so it's in the uh, it's in the graph metrics. It's called paths. And um, let me see if I can find it for you. Here we go. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so here's graph matrix, 
and here's paths. I didn't have it turned on because in order to turn on paths, you it wants you to tell it this. It says, where is the ID for the message and where is the parent's ID? And where's the date and where's the tweet? And if you do that, then um, it'll build the threaded chain for you. So right here, paths and path options. That dialogue. Okay, noted. Thank you so much, Dr. Smith. I think we're going to move to one more question from Miss Hannah. Okay. Hello. Hello, Dr. Smith. Howdy. Um, my name is Hannah. Um, Hello. I have some questions, um, maybe about more sociological but I really uh, curious. Um, the first question, what do you think? Um, is it the same crowds in social media uh, and crowds in real life? Um, I mean, about the human, uh, human interaction, is it different or is just the same? Um, between social media and in real life? What do you think? That's my first question. And my second question is, um, in this innermost digital world, who is who dominant in this public digital? And my third, it's not a question, but uh, more like, uh, I do really like your presentation uh, you uh, present about that social weaponization in social media, and you present about uh, pollution, potential of pollution in social media. And the last presentation, uh, you you tell us about the solution. I think it's a very comprehensive presentation. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I'll try to answer those questions. Um, how is social media different from physical discussions? It's a good question. Uh, in some cases, you could argue they're the same because I have physical discussions with you and I'm texting at the same time, right? So sometimes it's happening at the same time, physical and virtual communication right at the same moment. Um, that said, are they the same? No, because I'm talking to you and you're in Indonesia and I'm in California and this is not the same as turning somebody here and trying to talk to them. And one of the differences is I get to talk to you. So different people get to connect at a different cost. And so there are differences. For example, in the real world, do people spam, right? Sending a spam message to a lot of people. Do you walk down the street and say, buy my shoes or come to my restaurant? Or it's very bizarre behavior to go to people and repeat a message over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. But we do that all the time in online media. So are they the same or different? They're different. Are there similarities? Yes, it's person-to-person -person communication using language, yes. But the costs of doing it are different. The benefits are different. So it isn't the same that they're identical, but we are talking about, let's say the difference between, let's say telegraph and telephone. There is a difference between telegraph and telephone, but how big a difference? Well, big, but total? No, it's still messages moving over a wire. One big difference is telephone, I can do it. Telegraph, somebody else has to do it. Okay, so there are differences. Each of them have different flavors or qualities, but there are similarities. For example, the telegraph created a network. 
the telephone created a network. So we could analyze both of these in a similar way. So continuity, discontinuity. With technology, we often like to focus on discontinuity. Everything is different now. As a sociologist, I also like to focus on continuity. Old things continue in the present. People fight, they lie, they cheat, they, they struggle with each other, they want attention. That happened before the internet. And it'll happen after the internet. The internet is part of it, but it didn't cause it. Humans caused it. So I, I think that addresses some of your question. Okay. I thank you for that question. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Smith, we have Alif um, wanting to ask questions. Please. That'd be great. Can you turn on your video, Alif? Hello. Yeah. Am my voice clear? Yes. Hi. How are you? Uh, uh, hello. My name is Ali Ramadani. I'm from communication department. I'm a student, and thank you for the opportunity today to ask you uh, some question. I'm actually a newbie of using Not Excel, but I'm already using for my research before. And then uh, I have uh, two questions about this not Excel. Very firstly, is about uh, tools in graph metric name is word and word pairs. The, the, there is uh, analysis about the sentiment analysis. Uh, I want to ask about how many percentage of the accuracy of the sentiment analysis using that tools, because uh, we know that in that tools is uh, using word in English. Yeah. Sometimes when I using context query of Indonesia, there is a word cannot be in one line. For example, like can in Bahasa, we, sh we should uh, a type tidak bisa. That, that thing, it make me confused that I'm not really sure about my analysis from that sentiment because we have to separate that word. Uh, that word. Okay. And then the second question is about uh, why not Excel is only collected uh, 80,000 tweets. Is that any possibility to collect data more than uh, 80,000 tweets. For example, if uh, I have access from a uh, Twitter to collect data in the past, like 1 million data of the tweet. Thank you. Right. Um, okay, I'll do, take them in reverse order. Um, 18,000 tweets is what Twitter will give you. Twitter imposes that limitation. Node Excel, well, okay. Twitter does have a new academic Twitter API. You can apply for it. You search for the words academic Twitter. If you get academic Twitter, then Node Excel will happily take tweet IDs. So let me just type that too. So. Tweet IDs list importer. So Node Excel can only take data out of Twitter if Twitter will give it to it. If you have a list of tweet IDs, then Twitter will give you all of them. It's a loophole. So if you can bring the tweet IDs to Node Excel, this, the tweet ID list importer, will import all those tweets uh, up to a point, up to a point. You said a million. I think that's a big number. I think in a million tweets, uh, you may need a bigger computer. And so if we we're only talking about computers that are a laptop, we're probably looking at somewhere at uh, around 150 to 250,000 tweets on a single laptop. So, uh, and I, I would also argue 
are you sure you needed a million tweets? Just saying. Their first question, I think your question was, can I change the vocabulary used? Yes. I think your second part of that question was, what about multiple word phrases? Quotation marks. Just put them in quotes. Or instead of a space, put a semicolon. So There you go. Use semicolons to build compound queries. So if you put the semicolon in, instead of the space, it'll treat it as if it was a space. Or you can put quotes around it. That I think will do it. But you certainly should delete the American English, replace it with language that is appropriate, Delete the name of the list. We have list one, list two, list three. You can call them anything you like. It's just three lists of words. What good is that? It lets us count for you how often a word from list one appears for each person, each group, and for the graph as a whole. Seems like it's a useful feature. Now, in the future, we may add more lists. You could have five lists, you can have 10 lists. At the moment, you have three lists. It, it, it seems like it's enough. There's usually for it, against it, and moderate. You can have other words if you like. So we do encourage people to create their own vocabulary, use their own language. Okay. Other questions, queries? Did I address your question? Okay, Ali. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, Dr. Smith. Do you have more questions from participants who are not here with us? So Alif's actually one of our students who do lots of data mining with uh, Dr. Chatur and also Mr. Irwan at our um, study program. Also with Dr. Yuli. Mm -hmm. They're actually behind me. I don't know if you can see them. There you go. Bunch of brilliant students. Howdy. Yeah, they say hi. Good to see you. Okay. Uh, do you have more questions? Anyone? Because I think Dr. Smith um, hasn't had dinner yet. It's true. <laughs> Come on, everyone. Um, okay, so I think um, we can call it a day with you, Dr. Smith. Uh, before we close the session, um, actually, can we have a closing statement? coming from you to motivate us to do more big data analysis. And also we'll take a picture together. Oh, that's nice. That'd be nice. Okay. Um, there are accountants, there are auditors, financial forensic specialists. These are the people who make the world economy possible? Because if we did not have these people, all the stock markets, all the banks would be overrun by fraud. Social media is a kind of market for ideas. It currently has no accountants. It has no auditors. It's overrun by fraud. It's not that surprising, right? Most large human institutions, organizations, I'm thinking like cities, 
have limits to growth. You think about the city of London, it would grow and then something would happen and it would stop growing for a while. What was that? Cholera, disease, basically. If you had too many people in the city, the chance of cholera breaking out in the population became very high. The water was polluted. It took them hundreds of years to figure out the water is polluted. The city of London cannot grow unless a new infrastructure is implemented. Sewers. If we don't remove the waste, it will pile up and it will kill us. There is no waste removal system for the internet. It's, an, it's a nervous system, but it's not an immune system and it's not a digestive system. And it certainly does not have its own sewage system. And so how do we move the low quality information out of the system while retaining the high quality information? And so my suggestion to you all is, you will build the next city of London. You will enable the creation of the sewage system. It's not a pretty job, I understand, but it has to be done. Accountants who look for fraud need to exist. Otherwise the fraud will go undetected. And so we are in an early phase of the development of this technology. It's early. We don't really have safety belts. We don't have airbags. We don't even have like good road signs and lights. And so in the early days of automobiles, people died a lot. <laughs> they were lethal machines. They killed a lot of people. And it took decades before we figured out how to make them safer. That's your job. You have to make these things safer. It's too easy to just make stuff up and having made stuff up have no consequence. There's no consequence. I could tell people masks don't work. There's no consequence. But there could be. Now, we can't always assume that the government's going to do it because governments are stupid, frankly. You know, they're not that clever. And there are many different governments and they make mistakes. So how are we gonna solve this problem? We need auditors. We need accountants of culture, culture accountants. And those people will bring the documentation of fraud. And that won't necessarily make fraud go away but it's gonna make a lot of newspaper journalists very interested. TV journalists are gonna be very interested. There's gonna be a lot of good stories to tell out of this. And you may have seen recently the Pandora Papers. Have you all seen the Pandora Papers? Came after the Panama Papers, the football papers, there was WikiLeaks. Uh, these are big uh, releases of legal documents that have been stolen from law firms. But what do the documents tell us? Rich people don't pay taxes. That's what those documents tell us. And so that makes it harder for rich people not to pay taxes because now they have to explain why they don't pay taxes. That's the kind of role I want you to play. You are the accountants of culture. 
It's your job to say to people, these claims are not valid and I have the evidence to show it. Not everybody wants to listen to you, but policymakers, government uh, managers, journalists, investors, they want to know. That's your job. How many people read accounting reports? Not many. Does that mean accounting reports are not important? No. We should all know how to read those reports. But we don't, but enough people do. Enough people do. So that's your job is to figure out how to document and hold accountable the people who would otherwise generate low quality information in social media. That is the mission I think that you should have. And we'll build you the tools. We'll build tools for you to make it possible. So quick books for hashtags or SAP for social media, um, that's what we were trying to build. And that would be the accountant. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Smith. Such an awakening, if I could say that, <laughs> from coming from you. Uh, Dr. Smith, before we close this, can we have a photo session with you? So sure. We're going to have two sessions. So the first one will be with the people on Zoom. And then the second one, um, the people here in the room with me would like to have a picture with you on the big screen that we have with you hey. in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So I'll comb my hair. Hang on. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Bapak Ibu, peserta yang ada di Zoom, bisa mohon untuk membuka video Zoomnya untuk kita berfoto bersama. Okay. Panitia, ada yang bisa bantu? Okay. Okay. So, on account of three, we're going to have a, a picture together on Zoom. Okay. Yeah. One, two, three. Everyone can smile. Okay. The second slides. One, two, three. Okay. Are we good? Okay. So the second one, Dr. Smith, um, we're going together. Um, in front of the the big screen and take a picture with you just all right great bapak ibu boleh mohon untuk ke depan nggih kita foto bersama Wow, there's a lot of you out there. <laughs> That's a lot of us in here. <laughs> Look at all those people. Bapak Ibu bisa dada dada tadi Dr. Smith dada dada ke kita. I think Dr. Smith can hear the noises that we're making to coordinate this photo session. Okay. Okay, Dr. Smith, 
Okay. Um, okay, everyone. Three, two, one. Cheese. One more. Three, two, one. Okay. Last one. Okay. Let's go, Dada. Everyone waving to Dr. Smith. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Smith, for your time. I hope we will be able to welcome you in, oh, nice. in Indonesia, hopefully next year, when the travel restrictions are much easier. Yeah. yeah. I wish everybody uh, safety and health in these difficult days. I appreciate the time you've spent with me today. I really do. Um, I would like to invite you all to use this address. Mark at smrfoundation.org. That's me. And you know what I'd like to do? I'd happily chat with you one on one. If you want to talk about your research and how we're going to use Node Excel to get you your next paper or publication or degree, you know, uh, the, the, the timing can be challenging, but we'll work it out. And uh, this worked out today, it can be done. So I would love to hear from each of you. We can do one on ones or small group chats, and we can talk about your research, your goals, and how Node Excel can be helpful to you. Thank we you. Love. Thank you so much, Dr. Smith. I hope you have a very nice dinner, late dinner. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and hopefully we'll be in touch with you soon. Thank sure. you. I'll just say to Ketter and Erwan, thank you so much for making this possible. Really appreciate it. Good thank stuff. You. Yes. Very good. All right. With that, I wish you all a great morning. I'm going to head out, but thanks for your time today. Really appreciate it. Think link. Thank you, Smith. Good night. Thank you. Baik, uh, terima kasih Bapak Ibu. Saya uh, kembalikan kepada MC Budian. Baik, terima kasih Bapak Ibu. Baik, terima kasih Bapak Ibu. Kalau uh, kita semua sudah mendapatkan materi yang luar biasa barusan dari Dr. Smith dan juga terima kasih Mbak Oktis selaku moderator. Untuk acara selanjutnya ada materi dari Bapak Dr. Catur Suratno Aji. <laughs> Ini tanduk ya Pak ya. <laughs> Jadi langsung saja Pak Bapak Catur kami persilahkan. Baik eh, Bapak Ibu sekalian selamat. Pagi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dari hasil pertemuan kita yang dua hari kemarin ditambah pagi ini, mudah-mudahan eh, Bapak Ibu sudah bisa memahami big data dan juga mengoperasionalkan gitu ya eh, penggunaan software dan juga mungkin pemahaman kita terhadap data-data yang disajikan Droneblade mungkin Eh, mudah-mudahan sudah paham. Tetapi kalau pagi ini masih ada sesuatu yang masih apa mengganjal, silakan Bapak Ibu eh, bisa ditanyakan, gitu ya. Atau eh, kalau penggunaan Note SL itu sebenarnya secara eh, apa ya, secara teknis gitu ya. Eh, apakah sudah sudah 
apa ini mencoba ya Pak Irwan ya apakah sudah mencoba data-data yang dikirim dari panitia ataukah masih ada kendala eh, silakan Bapak Ibu bisa eh, ya bercerita ke saya apa kendalanya gitu ya atau kalau belum ya eh, nanti saya sama Pak Irwan itu eh, kita akan berbagi eh, bagaimana cara mengoperasionalkan eh, software Node XL ini untuk mengunduh mengolah gitu ya. Jadi eh, ketika Bapak Ibu eh, mau mengimpor ya, kalau sudah mengimpor data saya pikir sudah ya. Cuma bagaimana cara mengolah kita itu. Pertanyaan saya adalah apakah Bapak Ibu sudah punya data yang mau diolah itu. Eh, silakan Bapak Ibu mengunduh yang kemarin apa Kapolres gitu ya misalnya. Apakah data-datanya sudah ketemu dan sudah bisa dianalisis, gitu kan? Jadi kalau e, saya harus berpijak pada data ya dulu, biar e, pergerakan kita ke ke penggunaan Node SL lebih cepat, gitu ya, lebih cepat. Ketika Bapak Ibu sudah mempunyai data, maka langkah yang pertama adalah Bapak Ibu e, open dulu, ya. Jadi e, Ketika punya software itu ada Node XL Pro di situ Bapak Ibu klik ya kemudian open di situ nah, open itu nanti Bapak Ibu silakan open file yang Bapak Ibu punya itu ya kalau misalnya saya mau buka ini misalnya PKP ya saya misalnya yang yang file datanya kecil aja karena kalau yang besar itu nanti agak lambat dalam mengolah saya carikan dulu yang eh, jumlah penggunanya enggak terlalu banyak gitu ya Bapak Ibu sekalian. Dan eh, contoh misalnya kebijakan eh PKP ya, PKP itu perintah kawalan pergerakan. Ini saya coba buka dulu. Ya, coba buka dulu. Bapak Ibu juga coba buka datanya itu ya nanti kita akan sama-sama mengolah ya, sama-sama mengolah data. Jadi langkah pertama Bapak Ibu adalah kita ingin melihat seberapa banyak pengguna yang membicarakan isu yang kita unduh. Ya, silakan Bapak Ibu ketika punya data, yang terpenting adalah langkah pertama adalah kita ingin tahu berapa sih jumlah pengguna yang membicarakan isu yang kita unduh. Misalnya kemarin kita kalau saya mengunduh dunia Dian itu yang membicarakan kasusnya eh, yang kemarin itu dunia dian itu hampir 17 ribu nah, itu. Nah, ketika bapak ibu misalnya saya ini ingin membuka tentang percakapan eh, PKP di Malaysia, ya misalnya dalam satu minggu, ya jadi bapak ibu nanti ketika biasanya ditanya berapa sih kapan kita ini mulai mengambil data, biasanya ada rentang waktu, misalnya dari 1 Agustus sampai 30 Agustus itu rentang waktu pengunduhan data kita ya biasanya kalau software itu hanya dua minggu terakhir jadi kalau teman-teman mahasiswa itu kalau ditanya penguji misalnya lo kok datanya kok cuma sekian nah, ini problemnya jadi problem kita itu adalah data yang kita unduh itu adalah data yang terbaru yang dua minggu terakhir bagaimana cara kita kalau mengunduh sebelumnya ya kita harus berlangganan apinya ya jadi kita ini hanya berbicara data yang kita unduh dua minggu terakhir ini yaitu selalu software selalu begitu selalu mengunduh data yang terbaru tidak mengunduh data yang lama-lama ya jadi kemudian Bapak Ibu masuk not SL Pro ini ya kemudian masuk di grab metric ini ya, grab metric ini Bapak Ibu ini kan diminta ya Bapak Ibu ini centang semua saja dicintang saja jadi saya ingin menampilkan vertex degree, vertex in degree, vertex out degree. Jadi kalau Bapak Ibu tidak mencentang seperti ini berarti Bapak Ibu tidak ingin data ini masuk. Tapi kalau Bapak Ibu ingin masuk datanya diklik saja semua. Kemudian di bawah itu ada kalkulit metrik ya. Nah, Bapak Ibu tekan di situ. Ya, biasanya agak lama. Biasanya agak lama. Ya, jadi kalau Bapak Ibu sudah klik ya jadi ketika e, nanti itu kita ingin cari volumenya, cari e, top tweetnya gitu ya. 
kemudian kita cari uh, top influencernya nanti di situ ya nanti di situ ketika bapak ibu klik dulu semua ya eh, nanti itu kalkulit metrik itu ya diklik baru nanti muncul nah, muncul data-data seperti ini ya, nanti itu muncul gitu ya ya data-data seperti ini ya diklik semua gitu kan nah ketika bapak ibu nanti ingin melihat berapa sih jumlah volume yang yang berbicara tentang isu kita itu ya di sini di Bapak Ibu lihat di di sini ada S S itu adalah jumlah hubungan. Jadi siapa? Jadi Bapak Ibu kalau melihat di bawah itu ada S itu siapa berbicara dengan siapa. Ya. Nah, kalau ingin melihat jumlah pesertanya atau jumlah usernya itu vertiknya ini. Oh Ya, di kolom 2 itu. Nah, itu jumlah orang atau jumlah pengguna yang membicarakan atau lebih ringkasnya Bapak Ibu lihat di overall metric ini nah ini overall metricnya ini nah ini tampilannya terlalu nah ini Bapak Ibu sekalian ketika Bapak Ibu klik overall metric maka di situ terlihat Pertisnya adalah 840, artinya bahwa ketika kita mengunduh isu PKP, perintah kawalan pergerakan tadi di Malaysia itu, itu terdapat 840 orang yang berbicara selama, ya selama dua minggu, ya selama dua minggu sebelumnya ini. Jadi kita, kita selalu berbicara yang update, jadi 840, itu adalah Ketika Bapak itu, Bapak Ibu ini membuat sebuah artikel, membuat sebuah laporan gitu, selalu ditanya berapa sih jumlah orang yang berbicara itu. Jadi kalau misalnya gini Bapak Ibu sekalian, kalau kita ingin mengartikan ketika kita mengunduh misalnya brand ya, misalnya berapa banyak sih orang yang membicarakan Gojek gitu kan, dalam rentang waktu satu bulan ini. Nah itu Bapak Ibu lihat di, di, di overall metriknya ini. Ya, 840. Nanti pertanyaan kita, 840 orang ini, ini menyebut Gojek itu positif atau negatif? Nah, nanti dilihat di sentimennya. Jadi yang pertama adalah kita ini ingin melihat volumenya dulu. Volume orang yang membicarakan. Itu, itu penting, penting buat kita. Jadi Bapak-Ibu kalau eh, kemarin itu Ismail Fami itu selalu menyebut volume itu jauh lebih penting. Jadi kalau misalnya kita ini ingin menganalisis gitu ya pertarungan atau prediksi antara Jokowi sama Prabowo, kita lihat di volumenya. Nanti berapa orang yang menyebut Jokowi, berapa orang yang menyebut Prabowo di situ. Bukan bukan interaksinya, tapi kita lihat volumenya. Ya itu adalah penting itu adalah penting, itu adalah volume. Dari volumenya, jumlahnya, dari jumlahnya. Jadi Bapak Ibu, jadi di atas itu ada grip metric, yaitu diklik, kemudian menghitung, ya, gitu. Kemudian eh, nanti bagaimana cara kita untuk misalnya tren ya, tren pembicaraan. Misalnya saya ingin menampilkan tren pembicaraan, gitu ya. Eh, time series ini, ya ini, ini tren pembicaraan. Bagaimana caranya menampilkan tren pembicaraan ini? Ya, Bapak Ibu e, min, masuk lagi di grab metric tadi. Ya, jadi Bapak Ibu silakan di e, time series ini, ada time series ini ya, diklik, kemudian pilih option. Nah, di, pilih option di sini. Nah, ini. Nah, Bapak Ibu bisa menampilkan saya ingin menampilkan tweetnya. Kemudian saya ingin menampilkan grafiknya itu per jam atau per hari atau per minggu, silakan. Kalau per jam berarti nanti tweet per jam itu akan ditampilkan. Karena ini kan real time. Real time itu setiap detik itu selalu ada tweet yang masuk. Kalau menurut saya eh, waktu itu per jam aja. Per jam. Misalnya eh, per jam itu kita tak ingin tampilkan. Siapa saja yang men-tweet ya, atau memberikan komentar terhadap tweet itu maka masuk di situ maka terjadilah sebuah tren pembicaraan. Bentuknya seperti tadi itu. Ini adalah tren pembicaraannya. Nah, tren pembicaraannya seperti ini. Di sini terlihat, nanti itu, eh, uh, di sini kok naik ya? 
Jadi Bapak Ibu, di dalam not SL itu hanya grafik, hanya angka, kemudian apa lagi ya? Hanya simbol-simbol saja. Yang memanai adalah peniti. Pertanyaan kita misalnya, e, ini itu naik ini. Ya, naik misalnya. Ada 214 misalnya, value nilainya. Pertanyaan kita, mengapa jam ini naik? gitu kan? Dan kita cari, cari isu-isu yang lain. Itu. Ini adalah time series. Jadi Bapak Ibu nanti pertama adalah volumenya, kemudian tren percakapannya. Jadi selama dua minggu itu kita lihat tren, tren percakapannya. Misalnya yang kalau yang kemarin itu eh, ini kan eh, dunia dian itu ya itu. Misalnya kemarin itu kan eh, ada cuitan du, dunia dian ini kan ya ini yang Mas Api tanya tadi itu suratnya keberatan itu ya di sini itu tanggal berapa ini eh, sekitar 20, 28 Januari dia itu mentweet suratnya merasa keberatan dari Eger itu diunggah surat itu diunggah di Twitter dan kemudian mendapat respon nah responnya itu berapa ini ada 17 ribu ya ini dari mana saya ambil ya dari tadi itu dari volumenya jadi seberapa banyak orang membicarakan isu dunia dian itu ada 17 ribu. Nah itu. Kemudian trennya bagaimana? Nah ini trennya. Tanggal 28 Januari itu sudah naik. Tadi kan konsisten tadi. Jadi eh, dunia dian tadi itu upload di tanggal 28 Januari. Di Note XL nya juga terekam di situ. Oh ternyata 28 Januari itu ada tren 14 ribu orang. Kemudian tanggal 29 naik lagi. Tanggal 30 sudah turun. Itu ibaratnya puncak-puncaknya. itu Puncak-puncaknya. Dari mana data ini, grafik ini saya ambil? Dari tadi itu, yang yang .sl tadi itu. Jadi Bapak Ibu nanti silakan misalnya, ini bisa di copy aja. Itu. Ini saya tutup dulu ya. Oh ini belum nampak ya. Tantar. Oh saya belum berbagi ini. Mohon maaf. Jadi Bapak Ibu sekalian, eh, Nah ini saya ulang kembali ternyata tidak ini ya apa tidak nampak tadi itu apa jadi saya ulang kembali bahwa Dian ini merasa keberatan terhadap suratnya Iger ya suratnya Iger bahwa e, Dian ini kan diminta untuk menghapus ini kan di suratnya ini terlihat ini ah ini uh, sorry nah ini terlihat sekali bahwa Kualitas video Anda itu jelek gitu kan. Kemudian adanya suara di luar video itu mengganggu. Dan akhirnya video ini dianggap eh, apa ya? Ibaratnya menurunkan citra kacamata itu. Kemudian eh, Iger meminta kepada Dian untuk menghapus YouTube-nya itu, video itu. Tetapi eh, Dian enggak mau gitu kan. Justru mengupload surat ini di di Twitter dan akhirnya menjadi viral dan mendapat dukungan luar biasa dari pengguna Twitter yang lain. Dan ini kita lihat eh, kapan dia itu eh, upload gitu ya. Eh, Bapak Ibu bisa lihat di sini tanggal 28 Januari. Kita cek ya, kita cek di tadi itu ada 17.000 orang yang membicarakan dunia dian itu. Kemudian di sini. Jadi tanggal 28 Januari itu kelihatan naiknya 14.000 orang yang memberikan komentar. Tanggal 29 menjadi 16.000 dan itu bergulir terus. Semakin banyak, akumulasinya semakin banyak. Sampai ada hampir 42 ribu orang yang membicarakan ya gara-gara surat tadi itu. Ini. Dari mana e, grafik ini? Ya tadi itu yang dari Note SL itu tinggal copy, sudah kita bisa taruh di dokumen Word, di dokumennya PPT gitu ya. Kita enak sudah. Sudah tinggal copy-copy gitu saja. Untuk presentasi misalnya. Kemudian Bapak Ibu, ah ini top tweet dari mana kita peroleh? Ini kita peroleh dari eh, kalau Bapak Ibu dari metrik juga dari eh, yang itu yang silakan Bapak Ibu kalau di not SL itu ya eh, mana not SL itu nah, ini ya. Oke Bapak Ibu di sini buka lagi. Memang ini agak 
uh, agak limet ya, mohon maaf ini uh, masuk ke deep metric lagi. Tadi sebenarnya uh, kalau Max Smith itu nggak mau yang model-model gini, uh, kita baca sendiri gitu ya. Uh, jadi Bapak Ibu silakan uh, mengamati di uh, network top item ya, network yang paling bawah ini. Kemudian option, option di sini. Nah, saya ingin menampilkan top tweet. Nah, ini. Top tweet ini. Mana ini ya? Nah, silakan bagi Bapak Ibu. Saya ini pengen menampilkan apa? Top tweet misalnya di sini klik. Ya, ada di sini ada tweet ya. Eh misalnya saya ingin top tweet ya, tweet ini ya. Misalnya saya tidak perlu 10. Saya ingin menampilkan tweet yang ranking yang 10 besar itu saya ingin tampilkan di dalam di dalam uh, perhitungan misalnya. Bisa atau enggak usah banyak-banyak deh saya 5 saja tidak apa-apa. Terserah. Mungkin 10 kurang saya ingin menampilkan 15 ya enggak apa-apa. Nanti 15 ranking sampai 15 akan ditampilkan. Ini kan permintaan dari dari uh, not XL aja ya. Uh, misalnya saya 10 aja. Kemudian oke okay, gitu ya. Oke. Okay. Nah, misalnya kalau ini saya dah Oke, okay, ini saya delete aja ya. Oke, okay. kemudian Bapak Ibu nanti tinggal oke okay di sini. Nanti akan mencari top tweetnya. Kemudian Bapak Ibu lihatnya di mana? Nah, setelah Bapak Ibu ini uh, melihat top tweet, ya di kolom bawah, ya. Di situ ada top tweet di sini, ya. Uh, nah, nah, ya. Ada network top item ini ya, ada top item. Ya ini, ini ada network. Nah ini, jadi Bapak Ibu sekalian, ini yang kita buat grafis ya. Jadi ini Bapak Ibu silakan, misalnya, jadi ini adalah data kita olah, kita tampilkan grafis. Jadi kalau Bapak Ibu lihat dashboardnya downgrade, yang downgrade itu cuma grafiknya ini, asal usul datanya kita nggak tahu, gitu. Nggak tahu. Jadi Bapak Ibu kan bisa ya, misalnya di di sini tinggal apa ya ibaratnya di blok saja ini di blok aja ini misalnya saya ingin menampilkan uh, ranking 5 misalnya ranking 5 aja misalnya sudah tinggal bapak ibu di sini ada homes kemudian ada ada insert ya kemudian tampilkan grafik ya kayak kayak menampilkan dalam bentuk grafik aja itu kemudian inilah yang kita nanti copy kita copy kita buat laporan gitu Grafiknya ini kita buat laporan, itu. Ya. Oke, ini top tweetnya. Misalnya sejak perintah kawalan pergerakan pemulihan, ini, ini bahasanya bahasa Malaysia, ya kan? Karena ini kita ngunduh Malaysia, yaitu. E, pertanyaan kita misalnya kalau kalau kita menulis artikel-artikel yang berbahasa Inggris biasanya tweet ini diminta untuk mentranslate. Nah itu kadang-kadang ya. Uh, akhirnya tidak natural gitu kan tidak natural tetapi udahlah karena permintaan uh, uh, reviewer ya sudah kita translate dalam bentuk bahasa Inggris gitu. ini yang kita translate itu ada yang minta uh, mohon ditranslate ke bahasa Inggris oh, ini kan tweetnya kan bahasa Jawa bahasa Madura gitu kan kadang-kadang kalau ditranslate ya nggak kena gitu kan karena dalam bahasa yang aneh-aneh kayak bahasa planet gitu Ya sudah apa adanya aja gitu. Nanti hasil transitnya kayak apa gitu. Dan itu diterima oleh reviewer jurnal-jurnal internasional itu. Ya itu yang yang tweet ya, tweet. Kemudian top influencer ya tadi setelah Bapak Ibu eh, menemukan ini Bapak Ibu bisa ya, sudah bisa ya. Dari Kapolres tadi itu misalnya, "Wan, eh, ini Bapak Ibu yang dikasihkan di luar data apa ya?" Kapolres Nah, Kapolres itu cobalah Bapak Ibu lihat di situ menemukan enggak top tweet-nya? Top influencer-nya. Itu. Oke, okay, eh saya masuk lagi ke eh ke Note SL ya. Eh ke mana? Ke Bapak Ibu pengin apa? Lihat eh, tadi sudah di Note SL ya. Oke, okay, ini ya. Ini Note SL ya. Jadi eh Top influencer itu kita lihat di mana Bapak Ibu masuk lagi di sini. E, pokoknya yang penting kan, tadi kan sudah diminta semua itu ya. Jadi Bapak Ibu selalu klik ini ya, not SL, grab metric gitu ya. 
Kemudian ada top item di sini, top item option. Nah ini, nah ini. Saya ingin sepuluh uh, orang ya, sepuluh orang yang yang paling banyak mendapatkan komentar dari yang lain. Uh, misalnya itu ya, misalnya ini yang kita minta. Silakan Bapak Ibu gini, pilih di sini. Ya apa yang pengen Bapak Ibu tampilkan? Saya ingin apa ya? memperoleh data orang-orang yang paling banyak mendapat komen. Maka saya pilih the green. Ya, the green itu top parkotopnya. Ya, masukkan di situ, kemudian oke. Okay. Nah, nanti masuk di situ. Masuk di situ. Kemudian setelah Bapak Ibu memasukkan, lihat di bawah lagi top item ini, top itemnya. Oke. Okay. Nah, ini kelihatan. KKM Putrajaya eh, JP Penerangan ini adalah top uh, ini ya ya ibaratnya top degree-nya ya top degree-nya Bapak Ibu bisa bisa ambil 5 misalnya ya sudah tinggal dibuat grafiknya gitu ya uh, saya ingin lihat ya ini udah ditinggal klik nah sudah nah ini ini Bapak Ibu harus belajar juga cara membuat tabel juga ya saya pikir kalau pivot itu atau kalau uh, ya ini sederhana kok data-data yang di Excel itu diubah ke grafik. Grafik inilah yang kita jadikan untuk laporan. Untuk laporan tesis, laporan disertasi, untuk ya ya kalau rekomendasi gitu ya. Dari sini kita ambil. Jadi kita tinggal blok aja Pak Didi, tinggal blok, kemudian kita pilih diagram. Ya kan di situ ada ada KKM Putrajaya, kemudian ada angkanya di situ. Tinggal klik itu aja itu sudah ini bapak ibu bisa pilih insert itu kan insert kemudian di sini ada eh, rekomendasi chat itu ya bapak ibu bisa pilih macam-macam itu dalam bentuk bar boleh bisa misalnya saya bar itu bisa ya, bapak ibu bisa yang bapak ibu inginkan gitu kan ini kan seni aja seni untuk menampilkan aja ya ya tinggal plek 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 gitu aja Nah, itu. itu ya plak 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 gitu aja. Jadi KKM Putrajaya itu mendapat 150 misalnya itu. Nah ini, oke bapak ibu, uh, ini ini top degrinya ya, top degrinya kita ketemu. Bagaimana cara menghitung degrinya? Nah itu kita masuk lagi ke sini. Tar ya bapak ibu sekalian pelan pelan. Uh, cara melihat degri ya. Jadi kita menghitung degri kadang kadang Mahasiswa lupa negeri saya kok enggak kok enggak muncul ya gitu kan biasanya kok enggak muncul ya kenapa gitu kan oke eh, bapak ibu eh, di sini oke saya akan pindah dulu vertis eh, ini ini bapak ibu kan negeri ini jadi bapak ibu ini kan lihat ya di di kolom berapa ini eh, Ini kalau Bapak Ibu dari small, nah ini kan. Jadi Bapak Ibu kalau ingin melihat uh, degrinya itu dilihat di ranking dulu. Dari besar ke kecil, kita lihat dulu. Nah, nah ini, dari besar ke kecil dulu. Itulah degri. Jadi degri itu dihitung dari in degri sama, oh tadi, sorry, Abi tadi saya saya menjelaskan ke Mas Abi. Jadi degri itu di dilihat dari mana dari integri integri itu gini integri itu komentar dari orang lain itu masuk ke kita berapa jumlahnya ada 149 orang itu memberikan komentar pada kita kemudian out degree itu komentar kita pada orang lain itu jumlahnya cuma satu jadi perhitungan degree itu integri plus out degree itu itu degree artinya cara menghitung kok ini menjadi top influencer gitu kan top atau opini leader lah kalau Pak Didi dulu mengenal itu jadi kenapa kok orang ini menjadi opini leader jadi Bapak Ibu di dalam analisis uh, jaringan itu ketika kita menemukan opini leader kita jangan diam misalnya begini KKM Putrajaya kenapa sih kok menjadi opini leader ya wajar KKM Putrajaya itu adalah departemennya departemen komunikasinya Malaysia dia wajar kalau dia itu e, sering ditanyai tentang COVID gitu, tentang COVID. 
JP penerangan misalnya itu penerangannya eh, Malaysia ada juga yang Mas Piu misalnya loh Mas Piu ini kenapa akun ini mendapat banyak eh, masukan atau komen dari orang lain Mas Piu itu adalah akunnya Fahri Hamzah dia menggunakan nama samaran Mas Piu jadi kita ini mengorek ya tidak sekedar Oh kita tahu negerinya KKM Putrajaya Mas Piu Pertanyaan kita siapa orang ini? Misalnya Didi Tranggono misalnya. Siapa Pak Didi Tranggono? Oh ternyata orang nganjuk. Kan begitu. Kita lihat profilingnya, kita lihat ibaratnya kita itu doxing, kita mencari selengkap-lengkapnya siapa orang ini. Kita jelaskan mengapa orang ini bisa menjadi opini leader. Kalau dulu itu, kalau kita dulu analisis jaringan yang manual, Misalnya, loh, kenapa bidan itu kok menjadi orang yang paling banyak ditanyai? Ya wajar, bidan itu pengetahuannya di atas rata-rata orang di desa itu. Karena seringkali mobilitasnya tinggi kemana-mana. Ya seperti itu. Kenapa orang ini menjadi opini leader? Kenapa Pak Lurah menjadi opini leader? Ya wajar penguasa di desa. Ya seperti itu. Jadi Bapak Ibu, cara melihat degree adalah Bapak Ibu seperti ini. Jadi Bapak Ibu nanti kalau kalau di sini harus diubah dulu. Jadi kalau Bapak Ibu yang directed ini, directed undirected. Ya, yang directed itu ada arah panahnya. Yang undirected itu yang tidak artinya mengabaikan panah. Jadi kalau Bapak Ibu menghitung degree, maka Bapak Ibu harus menggunakan undirected. Oh, belum di Ya, undirected. Kalau misalnya di director gini maka nggak muncul degrinya bapak ibu harus mengubah ini di klik ini yang di ada auto fill kolom itu ada directed sama undirected nah itu berarti kalau undirected itu yang directed itu memperhitungkan anak panah integrinya tadi itu anak panah jadi kalau saya memberikan komentar ke pak didi maka anak panah itu menuju ke pak didi pak didi memberikan komentar ke saya berarti anak panahnya dari pak didi ke kita ya bolak balik itu, itu secara teoritiknya begitu. Itu directed sama undirected. Jadi ketika kita menghitung undergree, maka Bapak Ibu harus memilih undirected. Bagaimana kalau saya memilih directed, maka nggak muncul, angka-angkanya nggak muncul. Nggak muncul. Gitu. Seringkali mahasiswa lupa, yang muncul nggak sama indegree sama odegree. Oh iya, karena uh, Anda uh, memilih directed. Ya, maka ubahlah undirected, maka akan muncul. Itu pertanyaannya alib bahasa Allah itu. Itu eh, terus dari ini Bapak Ibu sekalian ini ini yang degree, in degree, out degree semuanya bisa. Nah ini. Kemudian Bapak Ibu eh, oke okay. dari sini sudah ya Bapak Ibu. Jadi memunculkan top influencer sudah, volume sudah, top tweet sudah, trend sudah, ya kan? Itu. Ya tadi yang ditanyakan Alip tadi itu kita menghitung sentimen misalnya sentimen itu ada di word and word pen ini ya ini nah ini option ya tadi saya nitip pertanyaan ke Alip itu Alip tanyakan ini kan Bapak Ibu di, di sini kan terlihat ya list positif itu bahasa Inggris semua sehingga kata kuncinya kan bahasa Inggris kalau kita menggunakan bahasa Inggris ini nggak kebaca bahasa Inggris tadi itu. Misalnya jancuk, misalnya kan nggak ada di sini. Jancuk kata apa gitu kan. Yang sering disebut Mas Seko tadi, nggak ada di sini. Nah ketika kata itu dimasukkan di kata negatif, maka ketika orang menyebut kata itu, maka menjadi kategori negatif, pernyataan negatif. Jadi Bapak-Ibu bisa masuk di situ, ya di eh, sentimen, Masukkan kata-kata, jadi kalau kita itu triknya gini Bapak-Ibu sekalian, masukkan kata-kata in bahasa Indonesia yang yang mempunyai makna positif. Memuji, ya eh, kalau memuji misalnya kemudian, apalagi yang ada berapa ribu gitu ya kata-kata yang positif, ada itu. Itu masukkan saja ke situ. Kemudian kata-kata negatif masukkan juga ke sini. Ke sini. Nah, nanti itu untuk memilah-milah tadi itu. Ini ibaratnya sebagai ayak aneh, Pak Didi. Ayakan itu ya untuk memfilter. 
Ketika kita masukkan kata positif ke sini, kata negatif ke sini, maka ini untuk memfilter yang top tweet tadi. Nanti akan dipilah-pilah sama sama mesin ini. Oh, ini masuk positif, ini masuk negatif. Itu. Itu. Apa risikonya kalau kita tidak menggunakan bahasa Indonesia yang nggak keluar kadang-kadang, nggak -kadang. cocok, keakuratannya menjadi rendah. Nah, ini, nah, ini, ini, uh, oke, okay, ini grafik uh, cara menghitung ya, cara menghitung volume, kemudian top tweet, kemudian top influencer, uh, apalagi bapak ibu sekalian, ini sudah semua ya. Kemudian nanti Oke, okay, setelah ketemu semua itu, barulah kita menggambarkan jaringannya. Dari mana jaringan itu, Bapak Ibu bisa menggambarkan show grab-nya ini. Tunjukkan grab. Yaitu, kita masukkan ya, Bapak Ibu kalau kita klik di sini, show grab ini, nah, nanti kan berputar itu, itu masih agak lama ini menggambarnya ini. Jadi ketika sudah ketemu top influence-nya volume, maka kita analisis struktur jaringan. Nah, struktur jaringan itu Bapak Ibu bisa lihat di subscribe-nya. Ya, subscribe itu ada di situ. Ya, terlihat nah, diklik aja di situ. Ya, itu. Ada pertanyaan sebelum sambil menunggu muter-muternya ini internet. Memang e, nyeni kalau Bapak Ibu sudah mendalami ini, ya senang aja gitu. Kalau saya sih senang mainan gini nih. Unduh siapa Pak Irwan itu kan. Ya, Adik Ya, eh silakan Pak Didi. Ya. Eh sepintas apa yang saya tahu, yang saya bisa pahami apa yang disampaikan oleh Mr. Smith itu terkait dengan apa namanya? eh cross table, terus kemudian ada semacam degree of freedom. Nah, jadi ada kalau kita ngecek uh, distribusi normal itu. Ya, ya. Ya, ada seperti itu tadi ya. Tapi saya nggak paham itu kaitannya apa dengan big data, gitu loh. Itu yang pertama Pak Catur. Hmm. Saya, saya yakin Pak Catur Pak Irwan tahu itu. Saya aja yang nggak ngerti itu. Ya. Yang kedua Pak Catur. Apa yang disampaikan Pak Catur, Pak Erwan itu kadang kita paham, ada enggak, kadang nyambung, ada enggak. Kesimpulannya enggak ngerti, Pak. Hmm. <laughs> ya. Nah, maksud saya begini, uh, maksud saya begini, uh, apakah enggak bisa di uh, apa nama dituntun dari awal? Ya. ya dituntun dari awal dengan aplikasi yang kemarin disampaikan oleh Pak Irwan itu fungsinya untuk apa itu kita juga belum paham itu yang apa namanya yang Excel itu ya itu memasukkan seperti apa lah mungkin ya kita ngambil contoh yang sederhana aja Pak Datur kemarin dengan ya. Pak Irwan polisi itu kapolsek itu nah mungkin yang sederhana Pak Datur mungkin yang 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 lebih tahu kalau yang yang saya tahu yang sederhana itu begini Uh, Pak Yan kemarin juga menyampaikan tentang ini apa namanya vaksin ya vaksin itu obat apa apa sentimen kan gitu ya obat apa apa namanya ini, itu ya. apa konspirasi virus. konspirasi, konspirasi. Ya. Ya. obat atau konspirasi nah, itu bagaimana melihatnya berdasarkan big data itu kan sangat simpel sangat sederhana kalau kasus-kasus itu dilihatnya melalui apa namanya itu Excel not Excel Pro tadi gitu pak ya Enggak. saya kira itu pak masih oke okay. uh, yang terkait distribusi normal tadi itu itu statistik pak Didi dan itu tidak terkait dengan not SL jadi kita hanya ingin melihat distribusi normal jadi apakah Kadang-kadang ini, eh, apakah data-data yang ada di kita dan itu normal itu, atau enggak gitu ya? Dan itu kita bisa baca. Makanya anomali-anomali eh, itu bisa saja terjadi di sini di eh, di dalam data kita. Ya, 
Ya. Jadi uh, apakah ini normal atau tidak? Memang tidak bisa ini. Jadi ini sudah given, Pak Didi. Sudah given, tidak bisa kita. Kalau statistik itu kan kita data itu kita menguji data yang sudah tersedia. Kita masukkan. Tapi kalau di kita itu sudah given. Sudah given bukan data yang kita kumpulkan. Kalau data kita kumpulkan itu diuji. Baik itu nanti diuji relevansi validitasnya. Tapi kalau di sini kita tidak melakukan itu. Kita anggap bahwa software ini sudah valid dan reliable. Software yang kita gunakan. Makanya sering kita mempertanyakan, apakah software ini sudah tepat memetakan algoritma ini penyataan negatif, ini penyataan positif. Maka banyak teknik, maka tadi cleansing tadi itu Pak Didi. Cleansing itu sebagai upaya untuk mendapatkan eh, validitas yang cukup baik. Jadi teman-teman mahasiswa itu, oh ini nggak cocok, kita pindah ke positif. Karena karena mesin itu kan ada ngawur Pak Didi. Ya tadi itu, misalnya, eh, misalnya mohon maaf, kayak Pak Eko bilang kemarin, jangan cok Pak Jokowi itu keren ya. Nah, itu kan kalimat ke sebenarnya kan jantung itu kan negatif. Ketika keren maka penyataan ini menjadi positif. Mesin kadang-kadang karena hanya berbasis ke pisuanya itu dia masuk ke negatif. Maka kita sebagai manusia ibaratnya ini humannya ini penelitinya kita kembalikan. Oh ini bukan ini sebenarnya ini positif. Nah itu sebagai upaya ya. Ya, kesalahan. Uh, kalau mesin ini semakin banyak belajar, maka semakin kecil. Tetapi kalau baru buat, kadang-kadang besar juga kesalahannya. Kita sisir tadi itu. Kita sisir. Kalau drone plate itu, uh, mesinnya sudah sudah banyak belajar. Sehingga akurasinya lebih tinggi. Tapi kalau untuk SL ini, akuratnya karena rendah ya. Karena kita baru memasukkan kata-kata bahasa Indonesia ke situ sebagai filter. Kita hanya uh, ya betul. Ya betul betul. Ya. Selama gini, jadi Pak Didi, ketika ini kan penting ketika kita ingin memprediksi pertarungan politik. Ya, pertarungan politik. Ketika kita salah, misalnya seharusnya itu eh, Erik Cahyadi itu kok banyak negatifnya. Nah, gitu. nah ini harus hati-hati. Apa betul banyak orang yang nggak suka Erik Cahyadi? Ini bahaya. Maka kita sisir Pak Didi. Oh ternyata salah, ya itu tadi. Jangan tuh Erik Cahyadi keren yo, api banget ya itu. Ya nah, ketika banyak yang menyebut seperti itu, maka kita kembalikan. Oh ini salah ini. Jadi kita itu sebagai upaya untuk memprediksi berdasarkan data ini tidak bisa seenaknya. Kita harus hati-hati betul. Kita kita di sini kita kendalikan di sini. Ya sistem. Jadi kalau brand 24 itu ada positif, negatif, netral, kita pindah, kita klik. Oh ini positif. Klik ini negatif. Ada mesinnya itu gitu. Ada tiga pilihan Pak Didi klik 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 gitu maka nanti normal kembali semakin kita ajari mesin itu dengan membaca penyataan penyataan itu maka mesin itu belajar sendiri berikutnya ketika ada penyataan masuk salah di ini sama dia klik, klik. bisa bisa itu itu namanya internet of thing jadi bagaimana cara ngajari kita mesin itu makanya drone itu selalu mengajari pak mengajari mesinnya ya untuk membaca itu sehingga akurasinya menjadi lebih tepat itu gitu Pak Didi jadi eh, oh, ya. ya misalnya kalau Pak Didi eh, gimana cara memulai ya bentar eh, Pak Didi ya. alat itu katanya komputer ini rusak enggak apa-apa Mungkin ini Pak Didi ya, saya akan menampilkan ini asal usulnya biar Bapak Ibu mudah ya. Misalnya saya membuat artikel ya, misalnya gini. Eh, Bapak Ibu seringkali eh, saya itu kalau membuat artikel sama Pak Irwan gitu ya. Ini tadi kan yang yang not, not SL in Indonesia tadi kan muncul ini di Max Smith tadi itu kan. 
ini. Jadi Pak Didi, ketika saya membuat artikel tentang public opinion atau lockdown ini ya, gini, ya, uh, saya ingin analisis tentang PSBB. Maka Pak Didi, kan, jadi kan gini Pak Didi, kebijakan PSBB ini kan kontroversial. Banyak yang suka, banyak yang tidak. Jadi Pak, Pak Didi harus buat LBM-nya dulu. Kenapa saya harus meliti PSBB? Karena PSBB ini menurut saya kontroversial. Banyak yang mencaci, banyak juga yang memuji gitu kan. Karena teman-teman yang PKL itu resah dengan PSBB ini. Apalagi BPKM. BPKM kok gak mari-mari ya. Gak debu. Ini kok nggak selesai-selesai pemerintah. Diperpanjang lagi, perpanjang lagi. Kemudian saya tertarik bagaimana pendapat masyarakat itu terhadap kebijakan PSBB. Kita tarik Pak Didi ini pendapat ini. Jadi kalau kita survei itu kan kita minta pendapat. Bapak, Ibu bagaimana pendapat Bapak, Ibu tentang kebijakan PSBB. Nah itu kan dia memberikan komentar. Nah sekarang ini kita tidak mengandalkan data yang ada di kuesioner. Tidak seperti itu. Kita mengandalkan pembicaraan PSBB di media sosial, dunia maya. Kita tarik itu. Kata kuncinya apa? Bapak Ibu bisa menggunakan PSBB. Jadi gini, ketika Bapak Ibu ini PPKM, saya kok cenderung jarang orang menyebut itu lengkap gitu. Pembatasan sosial berskala besar. Jarang. Sehingga orang kadang menyebut PSBB gitu aja. Maka itulah yang menjadi kata kunci. Saya tidak menggunakan kata kunci pembatasan sosial berskala besar. Wah, kedawan. Ya, kedawan. PPKM misalnya, pembelakuan, pembatasan, kegiatan masyarakat, kedawan juga, PKKM saja. Itu justru nanti banyak yang muncul. Nah itu. Jadi Bapak-Ibu silakan buat LBM-nya gitu ya, itu Pak Didi. Ya LBM-nya kenapa Bapak-Ibu tertarik kepada PSBB gitu kan. Ya karena ya misalnya ini Juni kemarin itu eh, COVID meningkat gitu kan, tidak turun-turun misalnya. Kemudian apa artinya PSBB misalnya begitu. Ya, kemudian Bapak Ibu, ya, metodologinya jelaskan di sini. Metodenya misalnya saya mengambil data mulai dari tanggal berapa sampai berapa itu menjadi hal penting. Ya, menjadi hal penting. Jadi ketika saya mengambil data PSBB ini, saya ambil di bulan April tahun 2020. Kenapa di bulan April? Karena kebijakan PSBB baru dimulai. Dan ini kan penelitiannya tahun 2020. Nah itu ya. Jadi itu Pak Didi. Jadi kita meneliti datanya dulu. Dari kapan sampai kapan. Kita batasi. Biar nggak kemana-mana gitu kan. Jadi kita kerucutkan Pak Didi. Data itu. Jadi kalau kita menangkap data di dunia maya ini kan. Enaknya tanggal berapa ya. Jadi kan pembicaraan itu kan tidak berhenti intinya Pak Didi. Jadi mulai Januari 2020. Sampai kapan. Ya kan. Tapi saya mengerucut saja. Udahlah, saya ingin dua, eh, tanggal 1 April sampai 30 April misalnya. Itu kita kunci di situ. Maka data akan kita tarik di situ. Ada filternya sebenarnya. Jadi kita PSBB itu kita filter. Ya, kita ambil data yang di antara rentang itu saja. Kita ambil, kemudian kita amati Pak Didi. Tadi itu. Eh, hasilnya misalnya, hasil. Hasil apa yang ini tadi itu? Nah ini, ini Pak Didi. Uh, ya ini, ini adalah berapa banyak orang yang membicarakan misalnya, yang membicarakan isu PSBB. Ada 79 ribu orang. Jadi kalau ngegrab itu ya rumit banget. Rumit. Ya itu. Kemudian apa grab density, uh, density misalnya. Apa itu afraid geodesic itu. Jadi kalau grab density itu kepadatan Pak Didi. Jadi kalau kelompok itu padat itu kalau orang itu berkomunikasi satu sama lain jadi kalau di dalam kelas itu saya berbicara dengan Pak Didi dengan Pak Irwan dengan semua orang itu berbicara satu sama lain maka itu perfect itu merupakan kepadatan yang luar biasa tapi di media sosial jarang Pak Didi jarang yang mencapai satu 0,00 artinya bahwa menunjukkan pengguna yang satu dengan pengguna yang lain tidak saling mengenal densitinya pasti rendah Kemudian geodesik desinti itu langkah kita. Jadi kalau saya bertemu dengan Pak Didi, kalau sekarang satu langkah bisa ketemu. Tapi kalau di media sosial, itu pengguna satu mau bertemu tatap muka dengan pengguna yang lain. 
itu berapa langkah itu dihitung sama mesin itu oh 17 langkah jadi ibaratnya kalau saya bertemu dengan Jokowi itu berapa langkah mungkin sampai 100 langkah saya ke Pak Didi dulu Pak Didi nanti ke Partai Gerindra Partai Gerindra ke Sandiaga Uno Sandiaga Uno misalnya begitu jadi langkah saya untuk bertemu dengan Jokowi itu mungkin ya bisa 100 langkah baru bisa bertemu ya seperti itu itu gambarannya eh, average geodesic distance jarak yaitu. kemudian eh, itu yang kita ceritakan Pak Didi kemudian ini Bapak Ibu sekalian jadi ini adalah trennya jadi ketika eh, 10 April itu adalah awal pemberlakuan PSBB jadi ting tanggal 9 April itu banyak yang bicarakan gitu ya kayak dunia Dian tadi itu dunia Dian itu 28 Januari itu memviralkan surat itu itu jadi pembicaraan banyak ya, itu kita ikutin saja Pak Didi ya itu ini trennya nah ini trennya pembicaraan dari 8 April sampai berapa itu 16 April tampilkan Pak jadi laporan nah ini ya laporan jadi eh, setelah tadi kan volumenya berapa Kemudian tren pembicaranya seperti apa? Lo kenapa kok tanggal ini naik? Karena tanggal eh, 10 April itu eh, pembelakuan kebijakan PSBB, misalnya begitu Pak Didi. Jadi kita ini kalau analisis selalu analisis yang tinggi-tinggi saja, yang rendah nggak perlu, nggak perlu misalnya di dalam penelitian seperti itu. Maka saya jelaskan di sini, eh, misalnya tanggal sekian naik berapa persentasenya, misalnya begitu. Uh, ini Pak Didik, kemudian nah ini ini adalah orang-orang yang top tweetnya, orang-orang yang paling banyak tweetnya yang mendapatkan uh, komentar dari orang lain. Nah ini kapan jamnya jam berapa itu ya kita bisa laporkan siapa muka di muka di aku misalnya Pak Didik yang tadi itu di kita itu itu kodo radong misalnya itu saya nggak tahu juga itu itu top tweet yang yang muncul gitu aja kita nggak tahu itu siapa orang-orang gitu kan itu ya itu itu top tweetnya Pak Didi kemudian ini yang top influencernya orang yang apa ya ibaratnya orang yang paling banyak mensupport ya ban banyak komentar dan Jokowi itu 834 artinya yang paling berperan untuk PSBB ya Jokowi ya wajar lah karena presiden itu kan presiden itu itu jadi ini top tweet Pak Didi. Kemudian yang lain Ridwan Kamil, Anies Baswedan kita bagi-bagi Pak Didi. Top influencer itu ternyata ada personal, ya personal itu ya Jokowi, Ridwan Kamil, ada yang media, misalnya Kompas TV, Metro TV, kemudian ada departemen government, ada yang Transjakarta, ada di Bumas itu. Jadi kalau kita lihat top influencer itu kita bisa bagi-bagi Pak Didi. Bisa departemen, bisa personil. Atau bisa media, ya itu yang menjadi top influencer di situ. Dari mana gitu ya? Dari not SL tadi itu, Bu. Kita tarik, Pak Didi. Dari not SL itu. Nah, inilah baru kita gambarkan jaringannya. Jaringannya ada berapa klik, kemudian siapa yang paling berperan itu kita tampilkan itu. Jadi, laporan risetnya kayak gitu, Pak Didi. Jadi, kalau ini, ini yang merah itu, ini top sentralnya Jokowi. Jokowi itu mengendalikan ke semua. Kalau lihat panah merah itu Pak Didi, Jokowi itu berkomunikasi dengan semua elemen. Itu menunjukkan bahwa pengendali utama adalah Jokowi. Kemudian klaster-klaster itu. Ada klaster-klaster di situ, gerombolan kecil-kecil itu, bulut-bulut itu adalah klasternya. Kelompok-kelompoknya. Gitu. Kelompok-kelompok. Nah itu. Jadi ini, ini contoh Pak Didi, contoh riset yang ini sudah dipublish di uh, ASEAN Journal Public Opinion Research ya. Itu. Gitu Pak Didi. Ini cara ya, cara uh, kita membuat sebuah laporan penelitian ya. Yang menurut saya simpel kita tinggal duduk di sini, kita tinggal mengunduh analisis jadilah sebuah artikel. Begitu. Iya, di belakang meja. Wes gak usah keludusan ke kusener gitu kan. Gak usah ke mana gitu. Saya juga sekarang ini eh, lagi membandingkan, compare misalnya Indonesia dan 
PPKM dengan PPKM misalnya. Enggak perlu saya kan ke Malaysia enggak perlu. Malaysia saya sedot, Indonesia saya kemudian saya compare. Maka jadilah sebuah eh, artikel gitu kan, jadi artikel. Misalnya eh, ini yang lagi sebenarnya saya mau ini sih eh, saya mau masukkan ke ke apa itu? Eh, ke Ya ke artik ke jurnal ya, tapi belum sempat Pak Didi ini masih saya apa ini? Eh, ya ini sudah terbit tadi, itu sudah terbit Pak Didi. Tahun 2020 di Q4 lalu main lah ya, untuk lektor kepala ya itu Pak Didi, ya gitu kan lumayan, tidak perlu itu Q4 ya kan, aspor Q4 sudah nggak perlu repot-repot kita sudah mendapatkan artikel dan cukup bagus Q4 kan sudah bisa jadi syarat lektor kepala itu saya dua dua artikel yang big data loh pak didi q4 semuanya gitu e, artinya kita ini cukup masih punya peluang besar lah untuk mengoptimalkan big data itu itu kenapa sudah pak sudah pak Loh, ini sudah banyak bahkan e, kalau bapak ibu cari artikelnya wacana ya wacana itu sudah dilakukan oleh teman-teman Korea ya ahli Korea itu untuk untuk framing untuk wacana karena pertarungan wacana di dunia media sosial itu bisa kita amati ya ada artikel-artikelnya uh, tentang wacana bisa itu sudah banyak Pak Didi ini artikelnya sudah diaku ini uh, ini kalau ini adalah eh, ini yang ini ini masih bahasa Indonesia-nya ya yang nah ini Pak Didi Nah ini, ini adalah contoh ini ya, contoh artikel saya yang mau saya ini, saya mau kirim gitu ya Pak Didi, ini yang bahasa Indonesia masih belum saya ini. ya eh Misalnya ini, nah ini, ini menarik Pak Didi, saya itu hanya modalnya, ya itu tadi, download aja gitu, di, di kita bandingkan PKP dan PPKM gitu kan, kita bandingkan polanya sama, volumenya berapa, itu kan ini sudah ini lah ini ini trennya saya gambarkan ini top tweetnya saya sampaikan ini ya ini ini uh, sentimen ya sentimennya itu di Malaysia kok positif atau negatif semuanya ada di sini gitu kan ya ini ya, ini adalah top tweetnya juga kita bisa uh, misalnya ini halah nah, kayak gini pak Didi ini natural banget itu Alah mau ikut nyebar wak aja pakai ah misalnya gitu ya ini adalah top tweet itu ya nah, ini adalah perbandingan siapa sih yang menjadi top influencer di Malaysia dan Indonesia misalnya nah, itu bisa kita lihat ini kalau buat skripsi gampang ini teman-teman mahasiswa itu e, sudah ini bisa lah bisa itu bisa jadi itu bapak ibu sekalian e, kita mulai dari pertama pemilihan isu lah. Isu itu saya harapkan yang kontroversial saja. Ya kayak PSBB itu kalau Bapak Ibu nampang PSBB mungkin ratusan ribu. Ratusan ribu. Karena banyak orang yang berbicara PSBB. Atau ya tadi dunia dian itu ya pertarungan itu juga lumayan banyak. Karena di tweetnya itu ada 40 ribu orang pasti banyak ini pasti banyak jadi silakan bapak ibu kalau ingin menambang sebuah isu tip buat bapak ibu adalah pilihlah yang kontroversial yang lagi pembicaraan ada juga mahasiswa pak saya ingin melihat engagementnya bupati pacitan wah bupati pacitan opo ono opo ono datani saya bilang gitu ada pak coba tambang aja ndak ada akhirnya karena e, jujur aja masyarakat Pacitan itu jarang yang menggunakan ngerasani pemerintah. Apakah masyarakat di daerah Pacitan itu kalau ngerasani ibaratnya membicarakan ya pelayanan pemerintah itu pakai media sosial. Ya itu yang perlu kita sebelum kita menambang kita lihat dulu secara fakta. Kalau enggak ya enggak bisa bahwa enggak ketemu. Enggak ketemu. Enggak ketemu. Iya, jadi kalau Surabaya oke, okay. Surabaya itu kalau pelayanan misalnya Buris pelayanannya Risma dulu itu kurang bagus, banyak orang membicarakan di situ. 
Kalau Erik Cahyadi kurang bagus pelayannya banyak orang bicarakan sehingga kalau kita tarik misalnya Erik Cahyadi gitu atau e, pemerintah kota Surabaya misalnya itu pasti lumayan itu pasti lumayan. Jadi tip-tipnya begitu ya silakan Bapak. Jadi kalau kita bisa menambang query kemudian kita juga bisa berbasis kelompok fanpage misalnya. Bu Rini ini jagonya ini, ini, Bu Rini yang kan, saya ingat betul yang masyarakat Samin ya Bu Rini ya. Bu Rini, saya masih baca masyarakat Samin dulu ya, etnografi. Etnografi masyarakat Samin itu menarik. Saya ya baca sekilas loh Bu Rini. Bu Rini pindah aja di situ pakai software tertentu yang masuk ke fanpage-nya, ke grupnya. Misalnya grup kontak jodoh. Grup kontak jodoh itu hanya... Kita ini hanya menambang data yang ada di grupnya Facebook kontak jodoh. Tidak kemana-mana, Bu. Jadi kita tidak berbasis query, tetapi berbasis fanpage atau grup. Ya, tapi Facebook, Bu. Jadi misalnya saya ingin mengamati masyarakat Samin ini. Masyarakat Samin kalau dulu ngomong di eh, nyangkruk, di kopi, apakah mereka saat ini juga ngomong tentang masyarakatnya itu di media sosial barangkali loh Bu Rini nanti menarik itu Bu saya tunggu itu uh, netografinya gitu kan netografinya itu yang pernah kita usulkan jadi Bu Rini nanti nambang ke biasanya ada kelompok-kelompok masyarakat samin nanti Pak Irwan nambangnya itu bisa itu fokus di masyarakat samin biasanya kan ada grup masyarakat Jombang masyarakat Diwo misalnya Nah nanti kumpul di situ Bu. Nah nanti itu grup masyarakat Samin. Semua orang yang tertarik pada masyarakat Samin akan berkumpul di situ. Maka Bapak nanti Ibu tambang itu. Tambang. Maka kita bicara masyarakat Samin. Jadi kalau tahun berapa itu ya Bu Rini me meneliti etnografi masyarakat Samin, maka menarik kalau kita sekarang ini berbicara masyarakat Samin di media sosial. Itu. Menarik itu Bu. Ya menarik. Sama ketika Mbak Siska ini, misalnya Mbak Siska disertasinya adalah prostitusi di media sosial. Makanya familiar dengan open BO, open bispar gitu kan. Apalagi itu. Itu nambang di situ. Ya, nambangnya query ya. Kalau di kalau di Twitter itu nambangnya open BO itu sudah muncul itu. Nanti open BO Jakarta sampai apa lagi. Open BO Surabaya gitu kan. Nanti ketarik semua itu. Ganti topik, Pak Iwan. Ganti topik, ganti topik. Pak Iwan ini tadi, eh Pak Irwan, Pak Irwan sampai Pak Catur, saya ini tadi coba eh, pakai kata KSTP itu satu jam setengah loh Pak nyobanya Pak. Itu kan apa istilah ini? baru ya Pak. KSTP. KS apa Pak Iwan? KSTP itu istilah baru kalau polisi itu menyebut KKB. Oh. Berarti kalau banyak itu. TNI itu menyebut OPM. Oh gitu. Nah kalau 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 kepolisian itu menyebutkan awalnya KKB. Kalau KK TNI itu menyebutnya OPM. Akhirnya pemerintah. Ya kelompok apa ya separatis. Ya kelompok separatis apa gitu loh. Jadi oh. ini kesepakatan uh, pemerintah untuk menyebut OPM sama KKB supaya nggak ada dua istilah gitu loh. Ini aja tadi satu jam setengah ini saya cari. Ah ya nah, sampai besok baru selesai itu. Sampai besok gitu jangan dimati laptopnya. <laughs> Kalau mati. Berarti dibandingkan dibandingkan ketiga kata itu bisa ya Pak Catur ya. Dari ketiga kata itu mungkin KSTP, KKB, OPM itu bisa ya Pak. Nah ya itu kalau mau compare. Bisa satu-satu dulu atau atau or ya ya Pak Irwan ya or or gitu ya. Lima hari lah itu proses. Coba Pak dipraktekin bisa nggak Pak? Itu itu bisa lima hari. Jangan dimatikan, masih kajian. Kalau dimatikan hilang itu datanya. Ulang dari awal, ulang dari awal. Kalau mati internet itu nggak eh, putus, itu ngulang lagi Bapak Ibu sekalian. Jadi jangan sampai putus. Makanya kalau Pak Irwan nambang itu di kampus, karena kampus punya internet yang lumayan bandwidthnya gitu ya. Kemudian Wah, saya... Kalau kampus saya susah, listriknya jam 9 dimatikan sudah. Ya, terus apa ini, komputernya juga yang ini, yang apa itu, yang punya memorinya berapa itu Pak Irwan? 100? 128. Nah itu, kecepatannya luar biasa itu. Hmm, saya minta tolong Pak Irwan itu. 
Gitu. Jadi berarti uh, yang uh, saya mau tanyakan tiga kata itu bisa langsung ditambang bersamaan gitu Pak? Or pakai or sendiri? Bisa, bisa. Jadi tergantung apa kemarin kan uh, penjelasannya adalah kita bisa menggunakan sistem operasi yang ada dalam pemrograman and or not dan sebagainya tanda petik dan sebagainya ketika kita ingin menggunakan dua istilah misalnya apa uh, kalau kita ingin mengambil keduanya kita harus pakai kat, ada kata n ada n ya operationnya n kalau kita mengambil dari dua kata misalnya makan roti kalau kita ingin mengambil dua keyword itu makan atau roti maka kita tulisnya makan or roti tapi kalau kita ingin kedua-duanya ada dalam satu tweet maka kita menggunakan makan and roti itu bisa sampai dilakukan untuk beberapa keyword Oke. berarti tiga itu bisa ya Pak uh, KS, ya, terus KS, itu KS, yang paling utama itu sebetulnya spesifikasi dari komputer itu ada minimum spesifikasinya upayakan memori di atas itu. 8 kalau 4 itu sudah pasti tidak kuat karena 4 itu dipakai oleh operating system sedangkan untuk melakukan aplikasi itu 8 ke atas akan lebih baik kalau 16 32 atau yang baru paling baru itu 128 terus kemudian Uh, untuk prosesor setidaknya Core i7 ke atas. Terus untuk visualisasi agar cepat itu memori uh, graphicnya itu juga harus tinggi. Terus kemudian yang patut dijaga selain apa namanya listrik karena kalau listrik mati pasti terputus kita harus ngulang. Itu juga koneksi itu paling penting. Koneksi itu tidak sekedar download saja tapi download upload. Makanya Pak Catur itu sampai ngambil yang 85 Mbps untuk download upload sehingga bisa dapat data yang maksimal dan akan lebih baik kalau kita menggunakan dual atau tiga connection pendulang sehingga ketika satu putus satu lainnya akan bisa terus berjalan itu yang biasanya kami jalankan hmm. di lab cyber jadi lab cyber itu sangat kompleks Berarti satu PC satu laptop itu bisa ya Pak kenapa satu PC, satu laptop gitu kita buka data bersamaan gitu Pak. Bukan, bukan. Dual connection. Jadi koneksi internetnya bisa oh. ada dua masukan koneksi. Okay. Jadi ketika koneksi satu terputus itu masih bisa jalan yang lain. Okay. Itu namanya okay. dual connection dan seterusnya. Karena kelemahannya pengambilan pada saat pengambilan data, apalagi data-data besar terkait penelitian itu kita seringkali menggunakan data-data besar. Kayak contohnya yang tadi Pak Catur itu kasus dunia dian itu kan tujuh belas ribu lah itu memakan waktu yang cukup lama. Nah itu kalau terputus ya itu tadi hilang. Kalau hilang ya sudah kita harus mengulang lagi dari awal. Ketika kita ngurang dari awal itu isunya akan berbeda. Kalau isu itu sudah misalnya sudah terputus atau sudah tergeser itu eman kita akan kehilangan momentum. Itu sebab tadi saya kirim di chat itu ada gambar perkembangan dari waktu ke waktu itu kita bisa melihat isu itu Bagaimana semakin menaik apa sudah menurun? Kapolres. Enggak muncul Pak Adnan ini. Apa itu? Bapak Ibu sudah bisa ngegrab ya? Sudah ya? Ini, nah ini sudah tampil ya? Tampilan grabnya kayak gini atau titik-titik hitam? Gimana Bapak Ibu? Titik-titik hitam Pak. Uh, oh, titik titik kita pati uh, ini grip option uh, i, berarti gini bapak ibu harus nanti kalau ini kan sudah cluster ya ini kelas ini cluster jadi gini kalau menghitung cluster uh, oh sorry kemana tadi nah ini muncul ya jadi ini yang kotak kota itu adalah cluster Ya, kelompok-kelompok. Bagaimana cara mengklasterkan yang gerombolan hitam tadi itu menjadi klaster-klaster? Bapak Ibu tetap masuk ke grup, ya. Kemudian hitung klaster dulu. Klaster ini 
cluster. Nah, ini cluster pilih ada Newman Moore, ada Wakita Surumi, ada Girva Newman. Nah, Bapak Ibu silakan pilih aja, itu hanya model. Kalau modelnya Wakita nanti kayak begini. Gitu. Modelnya Wakita ini. Wakita Surumi. Saya enggak tahu Jepang apa Londo ya. Ya, ini enggak ngerti aku. Pokoknya ini modelnya lah ya. Modelnya. Nah, kemudian diklik aja di itu nanti akan menghitung cluster. Nah, menghitung cluster kemudian di refresh grep lagi. Kemudian Bapak Ibu kalau ingin menampilkan gambar ini ya. Ini kan kayak gambarnya akun-akun eh, gitu ya. Itu di grep option ini. Di grep option kemudian pilih per tag ini, eh, pilih image. Nah, kalau milihnya ini jadi kan ada ini, ada cycle, ada disk ya. Kalau Bapak Ibu disk ya akhirnya bunder-bunder hitam itu. Kalau image berarti pilih image. Nanti gambar foto yang ada di Twitter. Jadi Bapak Ibu punya Twitter pasti ada fotonya. Nah nanti ditampilkan di situ. Otomatis itu. Otomatis itu. Ya, jadi itu dulu. E, nanti tapi di coba dicoba dulu. Coba-coba muncul dah. Ya, nanti laporan. Seharusnya enak ketemu. Nanti kalau ketemu itu enak Bu. Bapak Ibu sekalian kita datang ke laptopnya satu-satu gitu. Kenapa nggak muncul gitu? Itu yang kalau yang online gini, saya nggak. Oh suaranya hilang, ya. Ah, ya sudah, sudah. Sudah. Oh suaranya hilang dari tadi ya Pak ya. Oh, nggak ada yang sadar ini. Tadi eh, Bapak Ibu sekalian struktur jaringan tadi itu yang saya, yang saya ini yang eh, mana tadi itu. Eh, Bapak Ibu kalau yang di sini tadi itu, ya sorry. Nah, ini jadi struktur jaringan tadi itu untuk memetakan. Ini kelompoknya siapa? Misalnya Dunia Dian lawan Eger Avenger itu kelihatan. Jadi kalau Bapak Ibu juga analisis politik, misalnya Jokowi dan Prabowo, itu terlihat nanti. Mana kelompoknya Jokowi, mana kelompoknya Prabowo, mana kelompok yang tidak belum menentukan pilihan. Itu itu cara melihat struktur jaringan. Bahkan di struktur jaringan pun kita bisa melihat, misalnya Gusmus. Gusmus pada waktu tahun 2018 itu kita baca masih jadi dalam masih abu-abu mengambang itu, tapi pengikutnya banyak, pengikutnya banyak. Maka Gusmus itu kita anggap sebagai seorang tokoh yang netral, tidak memihak Jokowi maupun tidak memihak Prabowo. Seorang kiai ya begitu kelihatannya, tidak memihak kemana-mana gitu kan? Ya tidak memihak, dia posisinya ada di tengah. Nah itu, jadi kita bisa melihat mana kawan, mana lawan dan mana orang yang ya masih belum bingung gitu ya. Masih belum menentukan pilihan. Nah itulah fungsi dari struktur jaringan. Itu. Itu Bapak-Ibu sekalian. Jadi menariknya di situ. Eh, kita bisa memetakan kawan lawan itu ya dari struktur itu. Dari struktur itu. Jadi mudah-mudahan eh, ini bisa memberikan pencerahan gitu ya. Eh, Bapak-Ibu sekalian karena jujur aja untuk mengoperasionalkan not SL itu agak rumit gitu ya. Pelan-pelan Bapak Ibu sekalian, pelan-pelan eh, pelajari grab metriknya, kemudian di situ ada autofill itu ya. Itu juga fungsinya adalah untuk untuk ngisi aja Bapak Ibu sekalian misalnya eh, tadi itu ya. Eh, di autofill ini Bapak Ibu sekalian eh, oh kok nggak bisa ya. Nah ini eh, belum kelihatan ya. Oh belum berbagi saya ya. Jadi Bapak Ibu kalau misalnya saya ingin memberikan eh, setiap titik itu nama misalnya. Ya nama. Itu Bapak Ibu bisa di sini. 
masuk autofill ya autofill masuk di autofill ini autofill kolom bapak ibu sekalian masuk di situ ya oh enggak mau muncul ya nah ini kemudian di sini misalnya saya ngasih warna yang berbeda ini negeri itu saya kasih warna yang berbeda yang lain hijau yang yang negeri merah itu bisa dengan cara gini ini yang merah ya nah, silakan pilih jadi saya pilih misalnya gini, yang yang pengikutnya lebih dari misalnya pengikutnya lebih dari 10 gitu kan, atau kurang dari ini kan kurang dari 10 gitu ya, itu bisa kita atur di sini. Lebih besar dari misalnya ya, lebih besar dari berapa itu saya kasih warna apa itu bisa kita atur di situ. Bapak Ibu bisa di tadi itu. Kemudian setiap Note-note itu kita kasih nama, nah, kita kasih nama ada name misalnya. Maka nanti itu ketika kita e, mau jadi akunnya itu akan muncul di struktur jaringan. Bapak Ibu langsung aja autofill ini, ya nanti akan nanti di jaringan itu ada nama-namanya. Tapi biasanya kalau e, Bapak Ibu kalau membuat laporan itu gini, jadi kadang-kadang ada isu yang sensitif, saya itu jarang memberikan nama. Karena takut saya digugat sama sama pihak lain. Jadi lebih aman saya itu tidak menggunakan nama dalam laporan saya. Itu itu tujuannya kenapa saya tidak mencantumkan nama ya karena ada beberapa orang yang ada isu-isu yang misalnya kita membaca e, mempelajari tentang radikalisme. Kalau kita memunculkan nama itu agak repot juga. Ya misalnya Pak Didi masuk di situ, nah itu termasuk kita bisa saja ini kelompok radikalisme ini PNS kok masuk radikalisme lah itu yang gawatnya di situ maka kita tidak perlu mengeluarkan nama jadi di autofill itu bisa kita keluarkan nama Pak Buska. kita bisa keluarkan nama akun ya catur misalnya bisa di situ. kalau memang terlibat di situ ya jadi silakan Bapak Ibu coba di situ pertek ini label langsung nama ya nanti langsung pe pencet ini klik autofill maka akan keluar itu itu ya. Nah ini sudah ya udah udah kepencet tadi ini. Sudah lama lagi nih. Lama dia menghitung lagi Bapak Ibu kan menghitung dia itu. Menghitung gitu kan. Ya oke. Okay. Ya tadi ini agak lama kalau menunggu. Agak lama. Itu. Ya mudah-mudahan itu bisa membantu Bapak Ibu sekalian memang eh, jadi sebenarnya Bapak Ibu kalau memang kita ingin belajar software Tekuni aja satu software aja. E, kalau sudah oke, okay, baru kita pindah ke beberapa software. Kita tekuni. Saya bikin Note SL itu jauh lebih lengkap, jauh lebih lengkap, lebih e, natural gitu ya. Artinya kita bisa nambang sendiri, mengolah, menganalisis dan memvisualkan. Berbeda dengan drone plate yang saya bilang kemarin, Bapak Ibu hanya di given diberi aja data, kemudian kita analisis. Tapi kalau yang Not SL itu mulai dari penentuan isu, mengunduh itu kita sendiri. Nah itulah menariknya. Kita biasanya senang di situ gitu, senangnya di situ. Itu sebuah seni menurut saya, seni, seni untuk membuat sebuah laporan, rekomendasi. Begitu, Bapak Ibu sekalian. Mana ini yang mungkin barangkali ada pertanyaan, Bapak Ibu sekalian? Ini sudah mau jam 12. Ya, udah jam 12 ya. Eh, uh, MC-nya mana? Gimana Mas Kolil? Ya, Yuri, silakan Mas Irwan tambah. Mas Ari dan yang lainnya. Ngapunten Pak Catur. Soalnya terbiasa dipanggil dari tadi dunia dian, dunia dian gitu, Pak. Jadi saya kan nggak ngerasa dipanggil, Pak, jadinya. <laughs> Baik, mungkin ada pertanyaan dari Bapak Ibu yang ada di room virtual. Keren Pak Catur, terima kasih ilmunya dari Ibu Damayanti, Pak. Ya, terima kasih sama staf Ibu. <laughs> Monggo Bapak Ibu jika ada yang mau ditanyakan kepada Pak Catur maupun Pak Irwan mungkin. Kita masih punya waktu tiga menit lagi, Bapak Ibu.
Nah, ini dari Mas Ari Priambodo ada terima kasih. Nanti kita main-main ke lab cyber PR UPN ya, Pak. Monggo, monggo Pak. Monggo Pak Ari, silakan. Baik, nampaknya sudah tidak ada pertanyaan lagi untuk Pak Catur. Siap, jika nanti Bapak Ibu ada pertanyaan lebih lanjut, diperbolehkan untuk mengontak Pak Catur dan Pak Irwan secara mandiri atau personal melalui WhatsApp ya, Pak Catur dan Pak Irwan ya, melalui WhatsApp kepada Pak Catur dan Pak Irwan. Terima kasih Bapak Ibu. Baik. Mohon info. Sudah ya Bapak Ibu tidak ada yang ditanyakan. Sudah. Ada, ada. Terima kasih Bapak Ibu. Oh, itu ada. Mas. Oh, ada. Oh ya, silakan. Mas Ahmad Holil. Ya, terima kasih Pak Catur, Pak Irwan. Saya senang sekali mengikuti pelatihan big data analisis ini. Uh, terutama berkaitan dengan masalah pengukuran data tadi, ada banyak ilmu baru yang bisa saya dapatkan untuk beberapa hari ini. Terus terang, uh, bagi kami ini, terutamanya bagi kami di dosen-dosen UTM, ini juga masih kewalahan untuk masalah big data. Jadi dengan adanya pelatihan ini sangat membantu, terutamanya bagi kami yang ada di uh, Madura. Uh, tentu ini saya harapkan, ada kerjasama nantinya Pak Catur, Pak Irwan nah untuk kedepannya. Saya harapkan syukur kalau misalnya ada pernah Pak Catur atau Mas Irwan pernah membuat uh, video tutorial, mungkin boleh kami minta linknya seandainya saat, pernah ada gitu. Jadi bisa kami pelajari lebih lanjut. Pak Kole. Mohon maaf. Pak Kole nanti kita dapat, nanti saya kasih share bukunya ya, nanti dapat buku kok. Bapak-Ibu akan dapatkan buku tentang metode riset berbasis sosial. E, nanti saya kirimi vouchernya ya, untuk peserta kita akan kirim voucher. E, jadi, e, ada tutorialnya di situ Pak Ahmad, ada tutorial not SL di situ, silakan. E, Nanti vouchernya masih di ini ya, di bawah. Ya, ini ntar, ntar Bapak Ibu sekalian saya akan, ya, nanti kita akan bagi uh, buku ya, yang mungkin bisa membantu kalau... Nanti kita akan kirim vouchernya Pak, ini ya. Pak Kolil, eh, kalau kita pakai di, kalau ini memang ini ya apa, e-book e ya, jadi eh, silakan nanti Bapak Ibu semuanya akan dapat ini. Oke. Eh, ntar saya coba buka dulu nanti. Di sini itu eh, ini metode riset sosial berbasis big data, Bapak Ibu bisa nanti bisa masukkan passwordnya ya. Eh, ini sama Pak Irwan, ini. Ya, nanti akan dapat ini semua, uh, Bapak Ibu bisa di sini. Ini ada tutorialnya Not SL, Pak Nolil, di paling belakang. Contoh-contoh penelitian Not SL. Ya, nanti bisa uh, digunakan untuk uh, ya belajar sendiri. Ya, nanti. Nanti kita akan kasih uh, vouchernya dari Elangga. Ini. Ya. Oke. Iya. Eh, mantap. Ya, nanti kita akan yeah. kirim uh, peserta Mbak Ana ya, nanti uh, vouchernya nanti saya mintakan tinggal memasukkan kode saja. Uh, Bapak Ibu nanti kita kirim vouchernya. Ya. Jadi vouchernya kayak yeah. uh, nanti kita kirim kodenya ya, tinggal memasukkan kode saja. Yeah. Itu. Yeah, Itu Pak, kasih, membantu Pak pemahaman. Yeah. Jadi boleh memahami. Yeah. Terima kasih Pak Jater. Oke, okay. yeah, kasih. Mungkin berkah ilmu nih. Allah. Amin amin. amin. Amin, terima kasih Bapak Ahmad Holil dan Bapak Catur Suratno Eji. Jadi mengikuti Big Data Analysis Workshop ini dapat untungnya banyak ya Pak Holil ya. Dapat yeah. lisensi, dapat buku gitu. Okay. Ada lagi mungkin yang mau Sayangnya nggak bisa datang. Saya, mungkin lain waktu Pak, kita bikin workshop lanjutan nanti yeah. ya Pak Ahmad ya. Makanya barengan sama kegiatan yang lain soalnya. Makanya terpaksa yeah. harus online. Jadi mau nopo-nopo Pak Ahmad. Baik. <laughs> 
Baik Bapak Ibu yang saya hormati, akhirnya kita telah sampai di penghujung rangkaian acara dari workshop Big Data Analysis Case Success for Future of PR. Selama tiga hari ini kami sebagai pembawa acara mohon maaf jika ada kesalahan dalam membawakan acara. Semoga kegiatan ini dapat membawa perubahan yang lebih baik terutama dalam pemahaman di bidang Big Data Analysis. Akhir kata, terima kasih dan wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih Bapak Ibu. Terima kasih Bu Rini, Mas Ari, kemudian Pak Kolil, Bu Yanti juga ada ya. Terus sama satunya lagi ya. Matur nuwun Pak Catur, Pak Irwan dan juga panitia semua yang luar eh, biasa. Matur nuwun. Terima, terima kasih Bu Rini. Eh, terima kasih. Oh ya Bu. Baik mohon izin Bapak Ibu untuk file record Zoom nanti akan kami unggah di Google Drive dan akan kami bagikan melalui grup WhatsApp nggih Bapak Ibu. Supaya nanti bisa dipelajari dan dilihat-lihat lagi. Terima kasih Bu Rini, Pak Ahmad, Bu Siska, Ibu Damayanti, dan Bapak-Ibu dari Ilkom UPN Jatim.